Hey, welcome back to the Metropolitan Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. It is currently a Tuesday, which is weird. We don't, don't normally don't do this on Tuesday. It's Tuesday, April 24th. Hey, welcome back. Oh, no, 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 that's a loop. Oop, I gotta stop that from happening. Um, <laughs> how's everyone doing? Uh, yeah, normally we stream on Thursdays. If you tuned in last week, you might have heard that uh, Thursday, Thursday won't be available to stream, so we are doing it on Tuesday just to make sure to catch up. There's a deck list of the week can never stop. You always have to keep up with that stuff, so we're here tonight. So we're going to be streaming. We're starting even a bit earlier than we normally do. We might end a bit early. Uh, Imine, how's it going? That graphic. Did you make it, Andre? It was real cool. I did make that. Yeah, that is uh, an original art from Easy Mark from the course that revised the knot. It's Matt Zellinger's art. I took it off his website. His website has all his art. I didn't ask him. I probably should have done that. And then I did some animation on top of it, cut into some layers, moved some things, add some graphics. Glad you like it. It needs music for sure. But it was a nice thing to put at the beginning. Because you need something to put at the beginning, right? Just so people come up. Yo, Vincent, what's up, man? Impromptu streaming. That's what we're doing. Tuesday night. It's not the regular time. It's not the regular time. This is what we're doing. Dude, I love the zoom and the shine yet. Yeah, hey, there's also like a lot of really subtle effects like that. I don't even know. I spent a bunch of time on it, like cloth moves and like things. Glad you, you dug it. It was really fun to make. It was the um, first time I've ever done something like that. I want to do more. If I had more time, I'd make like a couple of those and cycle through them and use them as like transition cards. A long time ago when I was doing uh, the sort of gameplay stuff on this channel, I wanted the matches to show up with the two identities and they would be like slightly animated and then it would go into the game, but we already spent too much time on the editing. Kayak, how's it going? Thanks for dropping by and Puppy, what's up? Good afternoon. Uh, it's evening where I'm at, but uh, how are you doing nonetheless? Thanks for dropping by. We're streaming today on a Tuesday, so this is an impromptu stream. If, uh, if you uh, didn't catch it live, you can't blame yourself, I guess. Yeah, I just... Did you feel you get you get to use your video skills at work at all? 100%. I mean, my job actually is I'm a community content producer. I do video work and do live streams for my professional stuff. Andre, do you have a Twitter or other place where you announce stream times? Just curious. Tarmis, how's it going? Firstly, secondly, I should. I 100% know. Um, so today in some non-specifically monumental way is going to be kind of a new thing about... Uh, uh, we want to take the stream thing a bit more serious, do a better job with a lot of stuff. So today I got a new monitor right here. It's my second monitor. Actually, the new monitor is this one that I'm talking above into. And now I have my chat on the separate window so I can see my camera, which is really great. Uh, I'm starting hotkeying transitions. We're going to make a bunch more elements for the stream. I made a bot, like a chat bot. It's not up right now, and I can't even figure out what to use it for. But we're going to do a bunch of better production quality stuff. Um, coming forward. So in terms of like having a Twitter, I think that's in the near future saying like, hey, we're streaming now because that stuff is really easy to automate, let alone. It's a cool place to get like deck lists if you want to submit deck lists because I have no doubt at some point soon we'll be maybe spending a stream just playing community decks and stuff like that. That'd be really fun. Nick, what's up? Stimhack Slack auto announce when someone give, goes live playing Netrunner. Yeah, if you're coming from Stimhack, how's it going? I know they set up a robot to do that. Uh, maybe you're not used to seeing me on Tuesdays. How you doing? You can send a notification for just one live. Yeah, that's also a thing you can do is either on YouTube, you can subscribe and you can hit the bell button on Twitch is the same um, if you want to do that. And it'll give you a message when you start streaming. But like, I would like to gladly say I could have sent out a tweet this morning be like, hey, we're streaming this evening. I added this Twitch to send me emails, but a couple of hours in advance. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. A couple hours in advance would be better. It's not like a lot of times you can just drop what you're doing to watch a stream. So. At least there's a VOD on YouTube if you miss all of it or part of it. So that's kind of what we have. But nonetheless, let's jump into what we normally jump into. Imagine this is a Thursday. Now with I have all my tabs open. That's how this looks now. Um, we got to play a deck list of the week. It's generally where we start these streams. By the way, if you're new uh, to this channel, uh, what's up? My name is Andre. How's it going? I highly recommend you to make an account either on YouTube if you're watching from YouTube or on Twitch. I read both of the chats very actively. You can ask questions. It's a very approachable place, I hope. Uh, not just myself, but also the community is really great. So if you're new to this game, mind you, you're in good hands, I hope. Uh, this is Rash Decisions, which is an NBN decklist of the week. It's a controlling the message decklist. This comes from Ni Nemamaya. Uh, <laughs> hey, what's up, Remy? Hey, yo, from <laughs> Metropolitan Little Good. What's up, dude? Uh, funny enough, this deck is immediately immediately um just absolutely it's it's old it's it's we got rasher decisions this is kenny deacon simon smoon's deck uh which is just an uh, an uh clearly strictly upgraded version of this one i think we're still gonna just for posterity maybe we'll play one of these one or two of these and then we can move on and do one of these and see what the differences are 
Uh, just to go over real quick, if you want to read it, there's a pretty good write-up, but it's a controlling the message deck, and controlling the message deck, generally what their ability does, trashing things gives a trace four that gives you a tag, so it 100% it automatically protects assets specifically on turn one and it makes it harder to deal with your stuff and you, there's some really still very good assets in the game commercials bankers group is one of the best money generating cards if left untouched and we also have the new uh, rashida heem which is great now we played a deck like a similar to this last week that was running team sponsorship to recur your cards and that's really good also with calibration testing which lets you fast advance now on top of all these assets that are hard to trash and by the way some pretty good ice a new endless EULA, but all this other ice is relatively cheap, but kind of annoying to deal with. Things like Data Ravens, really taxing, Toll Booth, uh, no Archangel on this one. Is that you have a suite of operations, cards like Hard Hitting News, which is really, really strong. If you ever can get a credit differential on top of the runner, you can really slow them down or make them be permanently tagged, which means that closed accounts is super good. Psychographics is also a win condition, and uh, that's largely what we're going for. We also have exchange of information, which cannot be understated, it's so good. Yeah, the notifications on, but even a few hours ahead on Twitter is nice. No pressure. The stream's awesome the way it is now. Hey, Tarmus, glad you're enjoying it, but I, I hear you. I definitely do. We're going to be looking into Twitter for sure. I'm, I'm not on Twitter, so it's a bit intimidating. I've never used it. i got to figure out what DMs are and how to slide into them. I think that's the term. What's the name of the bot? Hope it's never in a theme and hope it's a RoboDog. It has a name. It is, uh, I gave it a Slavic Byroid name. It's Dario, uh, Dario Vodnik, V0DN1K, which is great. Uh, Vodnik means guide. Uh, and Dario comes from Darila, which kind of means gift. So uh, it kind of has like an on-brand on name, which I really like. Single Pete, what's up? It's not Thursday already. How's it going? Um, 100% sucks to play against. Yeah, CTM generally was like one of the bigger main, very competitive decks that a lot of people hated to play against. It's got a lot more reasonable, I think, recently. Bad Pub is a lot more common. Uh, things like Imp and Friday Chip really hold back these strategies, the heavy asset strategies. I don't know how popular those are, but I'm actually enjoying more and more playing against controlling the message. The biggest thing you can't do, though, is get buried by tags. Otherwise, it's a totally different deck. Joe Chip, what's up? Different day of the week. Works better for me. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Lilax, what's up? It's Neverner on Tuesday. I hope you're having a nice day. Hey, I am. I'm actually having a pretty great day. Um, uh, the next, the whole week is going to be really exciting. Hope you are as well. Cool name for the bot. I'm Intimidate. It's a good bot. Also, Kayak, what's up? I've been using Twitch VODs. YouTube likes to start the video at around an hour 20. Yeah. Yo, YouTube has been goofing that up real hard where it's only showing like the first, the last two hours. Uh, Kayak. Also, Tanuki, what's up? Um, if you wait a couple days to watch the VOD, it fixes itself and it gives you the full, full like, 3 hours 14. I don't know what's up with that. I haven't been able to diagnose it. I apologize. Also, chat, oh, I have this new monitor right now. It's a 27 inch, but it's also a bigger resolution than my last monitor. This one's the full, like, 2560 by 1440. So, we got a lot more pixels on the screen. Which means I'm not sure how things are going to fit on the screen entirely. We are going to have to maybe zoom in a bit less or a bit more than we're used to. So things are going to be a bit different. Um, let me know if that doesn't work out or what that looks like. And being a controlling message. 49 cards, 12 influence. Russell, what? how's it going? Morning, Sheriff Smith. So finally I'm in a time zone where I can watch the stream line. Hey, what time zone? Did you just move or are we just doing a different... It's because it's the Tuesday. Thanks for dropping by, though, eh? And Pikmin, what's up? Stream day. Tuesday is now stream day, at least for this week. Audio was lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did lose audio. Mic muted. Definitely muted. Yep, yep. Thank you. Chat. Yeah, my back there. Played in King of Servers on Saturday in NYC. How'd it go? Doing well. How was King of Servers? Uh, There's a lot of people in Montreal and Toronto that were like really sad they couldn't go down. Um, we seem like really zoomed out. Yeah, sorry about that. I did hit, I set up some hotkeys to transition things and one of them is mic mute and I accidentally hit that. So we'll see how bad that is. If we keep doing that, Look at this. I can change this over here. This is so good. If that keeps happening, uh, we're going to um, we're going to change where that button is because it's pretty easy to mic mute the mic. Yeah, sorry, chat. Ten credits. Someone says, "Hey, your face is blocking it." Arias, how's it going? Audio is gone. 
Thank you. Just fix that. Uh, this hand is pretty good. Also, how's it going, Arias? We're playing against Ken, which means a lot of run events. Uh, indexing is a scary one, Maker's Eye. Legwork right now is not too bad, but we have three ice and we have some really good assets. We could even consider jamming both of these on the same asset to protect them or the same server, or we could spread them out. Uh, bank job makes things look pretty bad, and Neos Informant is pretty bad, but this hand, you can do so much worse. This is really good. Yeah, everything is pretty small. This monitor is really big. I think that's like... Oh man, things are different. We got all this weird dead space here. Maybe I can put my camera in here. Did we just figure everything out? Let's see how this goes. Let's see how this goes, Jared Ross. <laughs> What's up? Yeah, oh man. Barry on Thursday to play with CTZ, Minnesota on Saturday with Big Boy. You're doing a whole tour of America. That's real good. Hope that's going well for you. Oh man, this is so good. So like we get punished by R&D multi-access, so it's nice to put something on R&D. This is, we don't have a one of in our deck, and this is a really taxing guys. They generally want that on the remote server. Something that's just taxing enough on R&D is good. I think it's probably the turnpike. And we can put these all in the same remote. Now this is a week to interdiction and drive by, but I don't want to pre-res any of this stuff. It's not that great. Uh, on turn one, I don't think. I've legit never seen Ken played. How don't play that much, but still hype for this match. Yeah, Ken is actually really fun. Uh, I think Ken might be a bit overlooked. One credit per turn, you still, it's like hard to get that much value out of it. I think there's not that many compelling reasons to play criminal right now. And we'll see if they can prove us different. Wait, is, I can even do this. They're starting with some good money though, so they can really fight against the CTM stuff. Looking forward to this. It's been a while since I've been able to play any Netrunner myself, busy with work, so I'm interested to see where the meta is. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to be meta representative. I haven't seen a lot of Ken myself, but the meta right now is actually pretty interesting. And we're going Dirty Laundry, mind you. This is basically like a shirt gamble with an access. That's really good. And you want to play a run at every turn. Ken just found out we have an endless EULA, which is just a big old end of run, but uh, we'll take it. How's the weekend interdiction drive by? It's separate. It's weak to mostly drive by. It's weak to falsify credentials too, but you're right. It's not that weak to interdiction. We can still res it. So Com Bankers is going to give us the big money. We can't ice this one up. That actually might have been a mistake to put the Mumbed virtual tour in front of it because you a lot of times want this for your scoring remote. Now we didn't get bank job turn one, so I think we actually can jam out the pad campaign. The rest of our turn, we want to get credit differential. Uh, we could consider icing HQ. These are all fine ice for HQ. There's no account siphon we have to play around. So a trace four on HQ is honestly not that bad. Yo, Shanks said, what's up? What's the theme today? Oh, we're going to be playing some criminal today. We got some sniffing to do. How are you doing? Hope you're doing all right. Um, Enigma is good on our mode server. We have two ice. This is probably good enough on HQ. It might focus their attention. I think we can draw once, install this. That's a fine card. If they steal, it's not the worst. We want to score it so we can exchange of information in it. But we'll put that in a new remote. We'll just put this on HQ. Uh, they can still legwork through this if they really care to, but Ken has no link, so it's going to be expensive. Wait, you just noticed I was here? Yeah, sorry, Judge Ross. There was a lot of things going on with the chat when I muted it. It kind of went off. How are you doing? I don't know why covering where currents and RFG cards go now. JNet was clearly not designed. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, RFG and current cards. Also, when I do that, that's kind of annoying. Um, maybe we'll just put ourselves over here. That probably won't go poorly for us. Yes. Yeah, I guess there is space there. Yeah, it's hard to do streaming overlay on this is not great. Endless EULA seems really strong. I think it's definitely a good card. Um, I don't think it's busted. It's a barrier and it's a barrier that is taxing. I think that's fine. It's a six credit do nothing that you don't need a breaker for. So at the end of the day, you can play a toll booth, which is more expensive and requires an answer. But this one specifically, uh, like in the mid to late game when they have their barrier breaker out, it doesn't matter. And that's where this ice, I think, is the best. It's not that great for rushing. Oh, that's going to be an issue. I don't think we have uh, any counters to this in our deck specifically. Like we don't have CVS, Cyberdex Fire Suite. We don't have IP block. So meh. so that's we're going to just cover all centrals. But there's no point to that considering uh, we uh, we're good. this is going to be on ice. And this is probably going to be on ice too. So got to see how we play around this one. It's going to be hard. So, this also probably means they're running Aeneas Informant. I wouldn't be surprised. On its own, it's just a good card. So, we could consider building a taxing remote. Um, we want our most taxing ice on the inside. It's not weak to inside job. Mind you, inside job is a really easy include in Ken, considering it only costs basically one credit. Spear fishing also is another run event. Uh, so, I don't know what to do. I think we definitely want to ice that up. We'll put this one on the inside. We only have one Quantum Kitty. So, this isn't like a scoring ice as much as it is just a taxing ice. It doesn't translate into a win. Uh, I think we can draw once here. I don't know what else we're going to do. And that's probably what we need to build a remote on. And 
I think we need to ice that up. If they run archives, let's ice up both. So we'll put this on server two and we want to put something taxing on archives. The Enigma is probably just good enough because they can't get through it now, but they can always get through HQ really cheap. Like this card, this ice is pretty bad against Amakua. Unfortunately, we have three of them in their deck. So if they want to run archives all they want. Let's, that's fine. We can gain a credit. Yeah, Evil A is definitely good late game. It gets better and better and better. Um, early game, again, you can get rushed through. It is kind of expensive. But in a late game, like jamming things behind an ice that almost always costs six credits to break is very strong. That's for sure. Raven inside, Eola outside, that's an expensive server. It is. This one is weak to inside job, but no matter what, this is going to be hard to get to, and I like that. Prepaid Comet Ken used to be really fun, but then rotation. I've really only seen him for the extra influence. You could also play, like, instead of prepaid Comet, you could do Comet with, um, what's it called? Uh, the library. Public terminal. It's kind of like a prepaid, but it's a bit less flexible. It's only run. There you go. That's the public terminal. One recurring credit. This, mind you, is only one credit to install too, so it's easier to get value out of. They didn't get value this turn, which is pretty great. And we are now technically ahead. So this is a really good card for us. I think we got to start building a remote and jamming this into it. We can also fast advance this card. We want to. We really want to control our draw because they're going to have HQ pressure for sure. So having a daily business show would be pretty sweet. But actually, that's the QPM that's really easy to score. Um, we could jam this into server two. It'll look like a Mumbad virtual tour. I'm okay with just taking credit though. If we have more money than them, they have to respect us. TLDR and EULA is delightful. That's the best. And then you run into like a Morningstar or a Sherman and it looks really silly, but that is an absurd combo. I really like that one a lot. Gonna do the high stake jobs. Yeah, they actually might do the high stake job. They get seven credits for that card, which is only still slightly better than a Dirty Laundry that gets them four credits. Like, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, prepaid rotated Remy. It came out in the first cycle or maybe in the second cycle. Am I Polana? Double EULA with Nisei token and code replicator super good on the remote. Yeah, Nick, that does sound really good as a taxing ice. Oh, they're going in for the inside job, value inside job, just on HQ. I don't want to res that. I really don't. And there's like one at access to you that's really bad. 50 minutes, that's fine. Take that. It's all yours. Um, but the thing with that is like you could run an ice that is like two credits more. You have a DNA tracker and that's an ex a shitty face check. And a lot of times people like that better than just having six credits on the run. But I see what you mean. It's still a fine piece of ice. Okay, so that inside job was free. You got one access. This team sponsorship, mind you, if we put it into an empty remote, they're going to be getting credits with it. But if we score this, and we score this out of hand, which we can't do anymore, we can recur this over and over again. So I think we want to draw this and probably ice it up. Icing up HQ is good too. Oh man, that card's busted. Let's play this card. Our hand's actually maybe too big to, fi to get this to fire off. But we need to draw into a hard-hitting news or something to slow them down, because we're not forcing them to interact with us. They're just letting this go though, and that's really bad for them. So we don't have that much ice in this deck. If we commit this to a new remote, we can also over install on the pad campaign. We could do Rashida. And mind you, this is a server they could get through. But if we do install two cards that we draw, the next turn we'll have four, five, six, seven, eight, which means we have to do like three installs, which is pretty difficult. And we're going to flood with agendas. So I don't think it's a good time for Rashida. I'd rather get the team sponsorship down. Luckily, cards like Data Raven and Endless EULA don't care about Amaku, which is like pretty, pretty dope. I'll put this on server three. Click for credit. Oh, that's all our clicks. That's fine. I run two DNA and two Anansi as well. That, that ought to do it. Remy says you start rushing. I think at 15 credits, like we can play like we have the hard hitting news. Mind you, I'm not particularly great at playing controlling the message. I've had very little experience with it, surprisingly, considering how like prevalent it's been in the meta. There's a falsified credentials. They're guessing agenda. Oh man, so they do have stuff. So they res the team sponsorship. So I'm just gonna go ahead and res it before they can falsify credentials it again. So that's one of the new cards that came out of the last pack. It's one of the reasons why this is bad. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-res this too, just so that they can't um, falsify credentials this. This one was like safer, but now they know what this is, so they don't have to run it. So we're gonna pre-res most of our shit. Mind you, they just paid one credit for that just to expose a card, which honestly isn't the worst. I don't know though, like I don't, I think if we had an agenda, we would have overwritten the pad campaign, considering they did just play an inside job from hand. So it doesn't seem good on one ice. Why do you spread out your ice when you have a free archives for Amakua? Uh, because we're going to ice up archives eventually. I hope at least. Okay, we now have more money than them. I think we can just rush it now. Uh, 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and advance this once. I don't think they actually counters things. We're weak to spear fishing, but they have to break both of these. And then they might hit this thinking it's not a quantum kitty. That's why we advanced it once. Because if they access this with a tag, which they're likely to do, unless they fem fatale the data raven or spear fishing this remote, both probable plays of 14 credits and can. Uh, it's going to be good for us. Regardless, though, they're going to hit that. Pray five. That'd be pretty great. So we'll see. Mind you, this card has pr given us, I think about now, shit, a lot of money, like 18 credits. That's definitely not right, but like a lot of money. So much money. Might have to start slotting Morningstar. I think you're better off slotting Sherman. It's less influence. It's actually like not a bad card. And no, it's not great, but Sherman's better. It's less influence. And sometimes it doesn't take up MU. Eight is way too much for Morningstar, which is... Well, maybe actually Morningstar isn't that bad. A lot of the barriers aren't higher than five strength. But like now, I guess with um, SSO, there's a lot of like six strength plus barriers. So I think Sherman might just be better. So they're playing falsified credentials to guess agenda. They got their five credits on the QPM. We can't pre-res that. So they know it is that if they want to do one thing this turn. Mind you also with the falsified, they're getting Amaku counters because they are exposing. So that's super valuable. So they could consider running that remote. Mind you, two credits won't do it. If they just run this remote, they also want to use these every turn. So, like, it's really hard to play a run every single turn. It's really hard to play a run every single turn. You see how many times this hasn't firing. Ah, oh, fuck! It's the spear fishing! That's the one card that we were weak to. Again, we called it. Whoa, what? So the spear fishing R&D, they could have spear fished this remote and we're working out for them. So this says, make a run, encounter the innermost piece of ice, bypass it. It gives us no reason to res this. It's for a single axis. All right. Arias is asking in YouTube, what's your thought on the twins? Being toying around with it, trying to force double Caminos and whatnot. Unfortunately, haven't been able to pull off that two-ish card combo. I think the twins is better than it looks. It's, it's a one influence card and it's, there's some pretty good ice nowadays. Um, Arias, if you want to try some fun stuff, play it in like the Foundry. Specifically Foundry with uh, Merlin. If you run three Merlins, it's really good because it does about, I think like 18 net damage, which if they can't deal with it, it's lethal. If you're playing HB, you have Helheim servers to make that like a very high strength uh, code gate as well. And you can win. You can cheese out wins. Um, Twins is also really good with Next Sapphire. Sometimes that just wins games. Uh, if we triple advance this or double advance this, we get a free team sponsorship install. So we could bring the pad back, but I think we just want to jam uh, Rashida in there with the calibration testing. Purging has not a lot of value. The server's pretty good. So let's go score it. Uh, we'll install this. Ice is the most value because you, you ignore install costs with team sponsorship, which is pretty rad. So we'll put that in server two. And we can put this on top of server two. It lets us fast events a uh, Beal if we draw it with the Rashida. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, they don't need paper club. They can just play six. They, so they could have spear fishing their remote. Brandon, how's it going? I've been playing CTM lately. It's so fun and strong. How you doing? Thanks for dropping by. I haven't seen that much CTM in my meta. A lot of people have moved away with it from it. Just the fact that I think if you're playing against Valencia and they ran run land one deep data mining and then or play employee strike as well, they're in a pretty bad spot. But it looks like a lot of people, okay, that's basically a free access. They're spending the, a lot of their like high value cards on getting single accesses on our, our essential servers which doesn't seem right to me. It seems like these are the sort of cards you want for the remote, considering that's where we're putting our taxing ice that has like specifically abilities you want to bypass. Um, while this is the kind of server that with Ken, you want to like indexing or maker's eye. So I don't know, at least they're getting their value. Like that was a, actually a, a credit. They gained a credit playing that, so that's fun. Kamani is an optimal choice for repeat encounters I found. It seems pretty good, right? Cause it gains, it, it keeps its subroutines. So it can be pretty okay. Okay, so they're getting down the equivocation. So this is why they want to hammer R&D. Now, mind you, this is still always going to be two credits for them to break. So hopefully we draw an ice with Rashida and get it on that server. So let's fire Rashida off. How does this work? Do I have to click on her? No, it's kidding. Okay. <laughs> All right. Not exactly what we wanted, but uh, it'll do. So uh, what do we want to do here? Let's think. Done. Dope. We'll check that out. Been waiting to make a next deck, but had only used twins and Wayland Urgent Techie. Yeah, also there was some Wayland decks back in the day that you see using one of Alice counters, but Foundry is probably the easiest to get twins value. It's um, it's kind of cool. See, uh, also some people are using it in CI because it's really easy to set up your combo. Okay, so another Rashida in here would be sweet. We can jam Rashida. If we put another calibration testing in here and they go and trash it, it's not actually that bad for us on the basis that um, 
that we can generally recur them with teen sponsorship and then we can put mumbed virtue 2 on r d which doesn't do that much we have five ice out the deck only runs um 10 and so we have half our ice so drawing for ice doesn't seem really good now 10 ice doesn't seem like a lot but generally these decks have daily business shows so you filter your draw relatively well and you can find your ice when you need it so hmm, hmm, we can probably also just purge we could probably just purge purging is okay because otherwise they're gonna ha hammer r d and then make us draw so actually i don't want this rashida okay well they can have the food force us to draw we'll have an empty hand Combine is quite good fun in a rusty wayland with the rod if you manage to get an advancement counter it can be lethal yeah in builder nations it can be lethal i think the easiest time way to do that is with satellite grid you could also do like pad factory but satellite grid seems i think that's what it's called satellite grid it seems pretty good okay this makes it hard to falsify credentials i guess you always just guess upgrade i oh, know you know these two upgrades so it's not that bad um and we got two ice on that server so we can check this out does running on Obakata with the Noble Path mean you can't steal? Yeah, Hydroponus, it does. Um, if they not... There you go. This card actually gains them like a lot of money. This gains them a ton of money. So this is the best case scenario for this. Uh, it's six, seven, eight, nine credits and a run. It's pretty good. I don't want to res this though. Actually, no, I sh should res this. Because then they can fire it again. Sorry. Do you mind? Yeah, 100% we should res that. Big steak job. Um, yeah, Obakata specifically says when you access, suffer this amount of damage, thanks, uh, to, to take the card. So if you if you prevent it with things like Noble Path or uh, Caldera, you can't steal it. It's totally different than um, City Works Project, which is just on access. They actually trashed Rashida. That's fair. We can always bring it back. They might contest the remote with 25 credits and four counters on this. One of their options was not to trash Rashida, which means that they could contest the toll booth on the remote server. But four is awkward. Like an advanced data loop in front of CityWorks, personally. Yo, so the the deck that's always been on the fringe of trying, me battling to get to work, it's like an NBN deck that runs data loops and, like, hits hand size. And then you play a single. We well, don't play single, but then during that run, you fire self-destruct and you win. That'd be cool. Hasn't happened yet. Yeah, Obakata's wording is, like, pretty great. It's really good. I wish the other one was like that. I wish the meat damage one was like that. Only reason I'm okay with Film Critic, yeah. Oh man, they're actually disassembling the server. Which I think they have the money to do it now. Like, that was all our economy. If they take this down, we have no more economy. So we're going to do a trace. Uh, no point really boosting it. If there was a last click, we could consider doing it if we had, like, a closed account. But uh, they're not going to run last click. Hey, Apathy, what's up? Thursday came early this week. Yeah, well, there's no stream this week, Thursday. So we're doing it on Tuesday. Just got to keep gotta keep those quotas up, huh? Uh, no, this will be all right. <laughs> I'm excited to stream, man. I didn't want to waste on Thursday. I miss Snake and News. Yeah, we lost a lot of good snakes in rotation, which is a shame. We lost most of the snakes. I'm actually kind of surprised that... Woo! Woo! Another high stakes job. Um, I'm That actually, they probably should have held on one turn because they gained two more credits if they used the recurring credits. Um, I'm surprised Viper didn't rotate around. It was like a pretty cool card. Just like Caduceus stayed, but Viper didn't. I think Viper maybe was a bit off theme, but they're going to trash that for four. And now they can clear the tag. So it's a pretty expensive turn for them. So if we want to spend all of our money, we could do advance, 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 and then use two calibration testings. Seems kind of bad. I don't think actually we have to do anything with this remote. We might actually just want to jam one of these in there just so we can recur other things. Hey, we're really weak to legwork too, so I kind of want to draw more than spending like a bunch of money scoring this, because it would be three, uh, it would be like nine credits to score the food, which seems pretty bad. Sea source is good, so we kind of want him to get the food. Second build kind of sucks. I think we just need to slow them down on money, and our money just ended. So getting a team sponsorship up to recur in any econ card would be pretty sweet. We had a draft tournament only using cards that rotated. It was great fun, lots of snakes. Actually, building a cube out of rotated cards. Oh my god. This is a fun deck. Um, Oracle May probably just saying event over and over again. Their deck is probably mostly events. Exclusive party coming off the top for two credits. Not too bad. Another exclusive. Oh, that's the exclusive party. So 
DBS is pretty good. Okay, so we could do score this, and then we could jam the Beal into this remote. Now, mind you, that's going to be most of our money, and then they'll be ahead of us. So I don't actually want to do that. The DBS seems really important, and we haven't been punished about putting things into naked remotes just yet. So I think we might actually draw once, put that down. This is actually interesting, too. Do we want to put all our eggs into one big basket? Because we could put them all in here. And then we could actually do big beal. Maybe. No, not really. Ooh, let's advance that once. It saves us like two credits. Sort of. Not even. It saves us like one credit. It saves us this card use. I'll put this in a new remote. That's a really good card. I wonder how hard it would be to play constructor with rotated cards only. I bet Grendel would be marginally playable. I've been building some teaching decks out of cards, including some of the old rotated cards. And let me tell you, Caddy Jones, hell of a card. <laughs> it's so good. It's so easy for teaching players. It's just like, yeah, you have infinite money. And it's so much more interesting than giving someone a magnum opus. And then you just say like, whoa, magnum, 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 magnum. Mano Faction, what's up? I hope there's Breaker Bay in the server. No Breaker Bay necessary. It'd be dope though, but yeah. Resing these for free is really good. Solo advance is the best. All right, they have a special order in hand, so I think that's the only card we know in their hand. We gotta pay attention, considering they're showing us at least one card a turn. Yeah, you can only use Oracle Man once a turn. And still, with the Amakua, they're not charging this remote with four counters, and they might want to consider doing that. I think they might want a Dirty Laundry to check server four. I think server four is a really good server right now, and we actually want to give them a food. I would actually naked advance a food if we could. Like naked install of food. I really like the word dope is making comeback. Hopefully mint is naked. I don't like mint. I've been saying dope ever since I was a kid. Dope is a good word. No hedge fund, sure gamble. Yeah, there's actually this deck has no hedge fund or sure gamble, does it? I don't know if you're talking about my deck, Dr. Empathy. Oh, because of Grendel. Oh, this deck also, by the way, doesn't have a sure gamble, I don't think. Or a hedge fund. Yeah, doesn't need it. Gotta protect your assets, though. Sad Stug, what's up? Rotated only? Sand Sand with no clot? Yeah, maybe those things are an issue. You do have Plascrete, though, which is good against Scorch. They're not trashing it. All right, they're going to Sifton. They're going to Sifton. Okay. All right, how do we play this? We can go all in or we split it. I think we just split it. Like, basically say this is the legwork. So this is information sifting. We get to make two piles. They get to pick one. Access the cards in order. So we can do all agendas in one pile and then put all the non-agendas in another pile. Hey Jim, what's up? Bring back Caddy. Caddy was a fun card. I like Caddy a lot. I miss Caddy. Uh, or we can just split them up half and half and then this is basically like a legwork they play. I'm we're gonna go split up, split up. Mm, yeah. So in the smaller pile, we'll do that. Okay. So if they pick the smaller pile, they get a trash bowl too. My buddy's back on the farm has a pure mint Yoda. Used to get tripped and down at the pit. All right, they access the small pile, so we've learned a lot about them as people. Half and half every time. Sometimes you go all in. One bill and all the rest in another pile. That's the worst choice, isn't it? Oh man, dope. That's such a sweet word. All right, so that's basically no much, not much better than a legwork. This card, mind you, combos really well with things like Fisk Investment Seminar, or sometimes also a Sync Attack. Let's control our draw a bit here. They know what that is. Ooh, which one do we pick? Well, this one's really good because it's cheap to res. It's not very good against Amakua, but this one. I like the art. Okay. So again, yeah. Well, I guess we got to do this. And there's like a lot of pretty tough decisions here that we have to make. Right? Like, we're going to go ahead and score that. Puts us on four points. Pretty good. Now, if we jam this into the remote server. Um, three, four. We don't win. So, <laughs> We can also put the resistor on here. That's kind of awful. So, I think we want to recur a card. I think putting Rashida Yahim into the server is probably our best choice. Because it's a good card. I like Rashida Yahim. And we need to make more money than them. It's actually pretty hard to do. Always take the small pile. I'll remember that, Remy. 
I think it might work better as draft though, as the rotated cards vary between busted power level and super weak. Ice in draft is quite funny to see someone breaking ice with Worm. I found Worm very good in draft. Like it was actually not a priority. Like I don't think anyone was quick to draft it, but when they did draft it, they were very happy they had it because it does a lot of work. Sometimes all you need is money and one Worm and you can technically have a scoring remote because draft a lot of times is about like scoring remotes, trashing programs, stuff like that. So just having an answer they can install, it's good. What did you learn about them from choosing the small pile? We learned that uh, they always pick the small pile. In 100% of the cases that we've seen so far, they pick the small one. Mobius, value, run R&D, gain a credit, run R&D again. We've got to res all their stuff. They'll hit the Mumbet Virtual Tour. This is the last click, mind you. So the Mumbet Virtual Tour is pretty obnoxious. I don't know why they're playing this. Considering the, oh, with equivocation. Yeah, never mind. Equivocation is actually pretty cool for us because we get a daily business show. It's like pretty awkward. I think I'm going to through that. All right, let's see how this goes. They're a small piler. Yeah, yeah, that's it. One data point equals always. That's, look, we, they revealed the food. We actually could wave you in. That's really good because we might have more money than them now. They have to boost this trace. Yeah, we, this might be fun because we can do sea source now exchange. That being said, we also could lose right here. Yeah, this is rough. We might lose. <sighs> oh yeah, Mobius gains four. I gotta read the card. That's actually pretty good. Select one card and move it to the bottom R&D. You're going to go away. So they would have hit that, but then this fired. Okay, so they have a bunch of money. Luckily, we're also going to get a bunch of money. This might be wrong. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we desperately need to do CSRS exchange. Now, we didn't draw a closed account, which would be the next thing. The next hot thing. But sea search close sea search exchange. Wait, we don't have an exchange. Ah, oh, ch shit, shit. Uh, we don't have an exchange. I thought we had exchange. I keep goofing the art. This looks like the old exchange art, somewhat. It's a yellow card with people on it. What do you want? It's clearly not this one. This one's fun. This looks like media blitz to me though. Um, okay. We gotta do something. With Amakua being so popular, I'm surprised CVS hasn't shown up in response. Or yes, I would put two CVS in every deck I've built as of recent because of that. Cyberdex Fire Suite so sweet right now. All right, so this is cool. We could kind of bury them with tags, but it's gonna be all our money. And then we can maybe Psycho will be allowed, but our money has really stalled. I think this is probably, this is, mm, this one, it's not, not so good. So we could do Sea Source and that's it, which seems kind of shit. Um, yeah, it seems kind of shit. I'm gonna throw out a lot of cards here. And then they can just go tag me and then win. Like, that's the problem is that we have to ice this shit up or they're just gonna win off of R&D. We scored the one quantum. I think we lose this one. Right, like we need to hard hitting news them, which is gonna be all our money. And then we need ice on here. And this is always gonna be one credit. This means they have to go tag me, which is kind of the best thing we've got going for ourselves. If they don't win on R&D somehow, this is actually going to save us. We also put Tollbooth on there, but then Caesars turns off so bad. I think we have to do this. Uh, we could jam into this remote, but if they steal it, they win. Install, advance, advance. We can also fast advance this out, which puts us on six points, which... Mm, I feel like maybe we're doing all this the right way. Oh, oh, okay. Tollbooth is like one of their actually most legitimately taxing ices. Having too hard any news is okay, but we're never gonna have more money than them. I'm worried about that. Activist, what's up? Pull back 15 minutes? 100% should have done that. Also, what's up, Activist? I, I like your channel a lot. Yeah, we had to pull that back because now we're not on game point if we pull that back. They just pulled a falsified credentials. I'm not gonna go res this. I'm not gonna res any of this stuff. Dump Sea Source. Sea Source is a win condition because we're going to draw into the exchange eventually and then we can do Sea Source Exchange that pulls us back. Yeah, we 100% have to shuffle this back. I don't play a lot of CTM. I forget that this is active in the runner's area. That's the best part where it's active. If we shuffle that back, it's really good. Yeah, Hostaria, what's up? You're saying that too in Twitch chat. Ah, oh, god damn it. Reverse Infection? I don't like that card. I think CVS is so much better. 
Uh, Maui, how you doing? It's a Tuesday, still decklist of the week. It's been okay. Uh, this is just, they have a lot of money. They have a lot of money, it's slowing us down. Can't really do anything if they have more money than us. Besides jam things in a remote over and over again, we're gonna try doing that. I think Amakua needs more downsides to be balanced. I think this card needs to have more than one influence to be balanced. AI breakers are always the ones that have a potential to cause problem. Yeah, this seems rough. Okay, we can lose right here. I think that was the game losing play that we didn't shuffle this. Luckily, they only have one click left, but they're going to see two cards. I guess we, we know that there's two agendas on the bottom, but there's still one food in here. One food, one beal. Uh, this one we can install naked. They have to go trash it, which will slow them down a bit. I like playing any Vanity Project and EOI decks. That's really bold. Okay. So don't 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 res nothing. We got the exchange. Okay, so our C source is now okay. So now if we could just get our credits up, we're in an okay spot. So we're gonna jam this onto a remote, onto a new remote, mind you. I think we just want to credit. The hard hitting news is harder for us to get value. If we do C source into close into hard hitting news, that's like the beautiful turn. But they do have a fair bit of money. Luckily our servers are actually pretty good. I just don't feel like we're ever gonna be able to res this toll booth. And if we do toll booth purge, that's actually okay. Maybe Tollbooth Purge represents something. I don't have enough experience in this matchup to know what to keep, but I feel like these are more valid win conditions than this one. We can always install this one for free if we score our BL, so I'll throw that out. So we'll remember to shuffle that bad boy up. That actually does goof us though, because it shuffles the two agendas on the bottom of the deck into R&D, so maybe shuffling is not right there. Twitch chat has my back though, don't forget the 15 minutes. At least Reverse Infection does something versus non-virus decks. CVS does something more valid against non-virus decks, which is installs in a remote server or also looks like a defensive upgrade. I think those are way better than having a card that gives you two credits 100% of the time. Cyberdex Fire Suite also fires mid-run. So they're like, okay, I'm going to run the remote server and then win the game. You do surprise Cyberdex Fire Suite and that wins you the game. That's so much better than trashing the top four cards off of an Anarch stack. Like, that doesn't matter. They're Anarch. They, they like their stuff. He remembered. Yeah, we remembered. I don't know if it was right, though. I feel kind of bad about it. But yeah, I'm not. I'm honestly not a big fan of Reverse Infection. I think Cyberdex Fire Suite is just way too good. And it'll never rotate. It will never rotate. Cyberdex Fire Suite also just, like, plugs archives up, which is fantastic, considering, like, that's... Ignore these remote servers. A lot of times people get tokens from running archives. Purging now might be okay. I wish we had more kitties. Kitties would be so good. Like they're playing hard into kitty. And we don't have kitties. We have one kitty and we scored it like a chump. Pad campaign. Mm. Oh, oh, this DBS is helping us. Well, we don't want, do we want that? That's technically the seventh agenda point. Okay, so we bury, it's gonna come up in like seven turns faster. I like trash one of those. Okay, 15. This is going to put us up a bit ahead. Let's go find that closed accounts. And they got to throw out one card. CVS is fantastic for archives, that's for sure. I love Macrophage because runners will face check it with four counters on Turtle. Yeah, Macrophage is also probably better than Reverse Infection. It's really bad against Link, though. And a lot of the Amakua criminal decks are running a bunch of Link because they're running all that exposed stuff. So, meh. But, uh, yeah, I think it's good. I say a lot of stuff. Don't mind my stupidity. I like the Sephironi going to have this conversation. All right, special already going out. Looks like they only want need one breaker. Get the calm bankers up. That gives us two credits. Okay, we got the combo. We have the combo, so we clearly don't want to have that in our life. So if we do C-Source, yeah, we got it right thinking here because we can now swing the game incredibly. If you make one mistake against this ma matchup, and I'm not saying they've made it yet, but there's always like one turning point against CTM decks where you step like slightly out of line and then you get punished for the rest of the game. So C source, if we do all our money, which we don't want to do, we can do credit C source. So if we do credit C, no, okay, wait, let's just do C, C source right now. So we spend two on the trace. So that puts us 11 and then we can make it 14, which is not enough. So not going to happen right now, but they have to deal with this. So it's probably going to happen next turn. What do we want to do this turn? We're holding seven cards, which is a bit annoying. Uh, a lot of them are really good. I think Beal's technically the worst. We can install this, click two, and we have to throw out the Psycho.
Thinking there actually seems really bad too because it shows our hand is full. And at any point in time, mind you, they can same old thing, let alone legwork or same old thing into information sifting, and then we might lose out of nowhere. Chaz, what's up? Reverse infection exists, so if your kitchen table friend gets too hot on upcoming all virus breaker suite, you can slot it on top of your CVSs. Yeah, as like the fourth CVS. It's also like a really fun card. I also think it is cool in uh, grind decks like the Jinteki decks. They're running because I can. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, yeah, in grind decks, like things like Potential Unleashed that want to trash cards off the top of your stack, it's a really good counter to Amakua and viruses because you just don't purge all game. And in the near future, you're going to see a lot more decks that install virus breeding grounds and just like chill. Uh, and then you'd be like, nuke, nuke, archive memories, nuke, and that might win you. Beyond Server 2. Uh, could do. Doesn't lose the game anymore. Looks like this Mobius could win them the game. So they're going to take some tags here, uh, multiple tags, which is pretty good. They're going to get uh, five credits after this, but they're spending more than five credits on this. So we might be able to see Sirs this turn. We're not going to raise the pad campaign, though. That puts us a bit farther behind. And this size actually did work for two. Wasn't saying it was better than CVS. It's solid option. It's an option. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> All right, we're now on game point again. Again. We know there's a food on the bottom. There's one more food. And one more one-pointer. Probably don't win. Probably they win right now. Data Raven. Woo! There's one food. Please let us have that dope swing turn. We might have the dope swing turn because they have to clear a bunch of tags. Still in it. Very much still in it. Still in it to win it. All right. We got to throw them in the books. Purging might have been cool last turn, I'll be honest. Purging probably was correct because this server is now ass that we can still lose to it. And we have no way to keep them out of the server. That being said, can we just win? No. Hold on, thinking. Okay, so we need to do Caesars closed, which makes the server still like porous. That's the issue. So like we need another ice for the server, which we just don't have. Because they can just run through this as many times as they want. And then like, I don't know. Um, This is a swing turn. I just, I wish that we had like a resistor for this server or like anything else. Because all our ice is really bad uh when they go tag me we have besides resistor which is trace four which they can deal with i guess when the close account so no matter what this happens do we hard hitting news on top of that i don't think we do because then we still keep five cards in hand so they can't legwork win yeah no matter what this happens so we'll go ahead and do this so they have 12 so we have to spend 11 on that putting us as at no that's too much we spend 10 on that 13 See close hard hitting nude? Imine, I don't even know. I don't even know if we hard hitting news. I want to keep cards in hand because we're weak to legwork. We definitely do that. But hard hitting news is going to put us on two credits and we need like six to fast advance that next turn. Mind you, all this shit will fire, which is like pretty great. I just wish we had an ice for the server, which we don't. Uh, Actually, maybe we just jam the beal in here. We don't have enough money to res the endless though. Shit, we can't even jam beal. We just can't jam Beal unless they decide not to run. And we know that they have one of these in hand, so they're not scared of anything. One of the, because I can's at hand. So like, seems pretty bad. I'll just click for credit, hold on. We still probably lose. Hey Mario, what's up? Club going up on a Tuesday? Yeah, we're doing this on Tuesday. There's no Thursday stream this week. How you doing? Thanks for dropping by though. Praise the Tuesday stream. My league night is usually Thursday, so I can catch the end of the stream. Oh shit, hey, welcome to a wild world that you might be missing live. They also have to clear that. Oh, they have a high stakes job. They can't play that. They have to clear the tag. Well, they don't have to. They could consider it. Oh, wait, we didn't play exchange. What are we doing? Why do we not play the exchange? Oh, man, man, why? <laughs> what are we doing? Oh, my God. Surprised you didn't exchange for the food. Yeah, that's the thing that you do to not lose. We are going to lose this entirely because of us. I am focusing too much on not this game. Oh, law, what's up? How come you didn't exchange? Exchange is too easy, right? Oh, fucking hell. Sean, what's up? Why did not exchange? <sighs> yeah, we got hard hitting reason. But then they go ham anyways. 
Exchange is busted good. Exchange means we win next turn. Exchange means that they are on, they can't win next turn. Like there's no way that they win next turn. I guess they could if there's a food and they hit the beal from hand. Oh my God, we misplayed that so poorly. Oh my God, chat. Chat. High stakes job. That corp card that the corpse play in the runner's deck is a trap. Like the bad things in Arkham Horror. Hey Cheshire, what's up? No, this card actually worked out really well for them. This is not a lot of decks that can do it. We're fine. We are good. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. We are one click short of jamming this bad boy. Oh, why did we not do this? Yikers. Oh my god. It's okay, we still love you. Hey Andre, why didn't you shoot away? <laughs> Uh, the game's all about hidden information. Maybe you just don't want them to know you've exchanged. Yeah, it makes it too easy. Now, we can fast advance next turn if we have another click left. So I think we might just want to hold on here. They hammer R&D, and we've been drawing through a lot of cards in R&D, so that's pretty bad. Now, the other option is putting an ice on there, and then we just want to keep this one. So I think almost for sure we still... They need to get... Okay, so we know there's two one-pointers. It's hard for them to get two agendas in a row. And we bought them two agendas in a row. Oh, no, we didn't because of mandatory draw. So actually, this daily business show, it still helps us. We could consider over-installing this if we don't want to draw through a deck fast. But we win next turn if they don't trash this remote, and they might trash this remote. Uh, they didn't run, so we can't hard any news. I want to keep cards in hand. Never punish. Never. Oh my god. You gotta hold on to what we've got. I don't think I meant to sing that. Andre, there's a really cool combo where you see search and exchange. It's on the main No way. See search and exchange? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Uh no, this is the good combo. Exchange is like it's tertiary, right? Like if that happens, it's fine. But it's all about C search closed. Because they had 20 credits or no, they didn't. Yikes. Okay, so we know they have because we can in hand. This still costs six to get through. They'll definitely be firing Oracle. We could have considered trashing Oracle. It's not that much better. Uh, it's kind of better than clicking for credit. I think this might be it. Uh -huh. The thing is, if they do, because I can on this remote server, it makes R&D a bit better. It shuffles R&D, though, but that doesn't really matter when you have eight cards and we're cycling to through two to four every turn. They wouldn't tag me. You can run R&D for two cards. Yeah, they can just run R&D. Yo, dude, I'll make a lobby to fight after this. I'm going to talk about deck list. Join whatever. Sounds good. So, uh, if you don't know, Shutdown Runner is Emergency Shutdown. That's Jamie. Jamie normally streams on Tuesday evening, so uh, they're streaming right now. Uh, what he said is we're going to play some games, so if you want to check out uh, their channel and my channel, you can see both sides of things. So we're going to play some stuff. We got some new stuff to try out. We have like an extra hour tonight, which is great. We started early, but um, so we're going to play some games. All right, they're going for it. Uh, they got to hit a lot of cards. They got to hit all, hit all of them. Trace. Oh, they're actually not breaking it. At two tags, why don't you just break this? I guess because then the resistor is a bit more manageable. But then you also have to break this one too. Oh, interesting. What's the chance that they like <laughs> hit us with a... Uh, hit us with a apocalypse. 15 minutes. Oh yeah, right. That's back in the deck. Oh, no, they, they, they can't Apocalypse. They did something. Stealing the stream view. Andre, you're going to stream snipe? That's why I got two monitors. Like, that's the only reason why um, I'm down for this. Is now with this two monitors set up, I can just open Jamie's. And then we'll be fine. Don't got to worry about any of that hidden information. I'm also only playing Runner. All right. They're going to see arguably three more cards. Ah, uh, fuck. <laughs> Good game. Yeah, the ice on R&D wasn't great. And I think there's something to do here with the positioning of the ice, so that was probably pretty bad in retrospect. Thanks for the game. Um, that comes down to like this end the run ice. End the run ice has a lot more, maybe not a lot more value, but this like is probably better protecting non-mandatory assets because it is a taxing piece of ice. But if they ever turn and go tag me, they can get through R&D really easily. And like this server is really bad when they go tag me. And that's a lot of times what happens against CTM matches. You get to five or six points. Hey, you too. Um, you get to game point and then you can just like slam R&D. Like there was almost no way that they don't win on that turn considering that they force us to draw. Like that's the, there was like what, 
six agendas and eight cards. That's not right. Five agendas and eight cards. So this is probably a bad server. As soon as we put something more reasonable on that server, and we don't have a lot of options in this version, um, so be it. You didn't purge and that sea sort was valueless. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, if we purge, it slows them down even more. We need these cyber decks fire suites. It's a pretty good on meta card. If you're just tuning in, check this out. I got this on a button now on the keypad. This is a med fall grade. Uh, did not mute my audio. That's always good. I'm down. It doesn't look like it's playing slowly. It, it looks like... My name's Andre. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is a match ball grid. We're streaming on a Tuesday just because Thursday we won't be around, so don't tune in that night. Rip Andre. Oh, we, we pulled it off, right? Wait, are you playing controlling the message? I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Poglos, did that close a week? But dude, we gotta do it. Um Looks like we gotta play runner. Yo, hey. Dig into a deck. Okay, um, I wanted to quickly check what was the difference between rash decisions and rasher decisions. And off the bat, without looking at anything other more meaningful, this one has two IP blocks in it. Seems pretty good. That already would help us a lot in that specific matchup. Otherwise, it's not that different. It has hedge funds, which is good. I think we actually probably could have used that. It has exchange. It doesn't have a uh, closed accounts. So without closed accounts, there's no other value for C-Source. Um, still on one QPM, three Aries. It's a good card but whether this is rash and this is rasher I, I don't i don't i don't know who's winning okay so we were playing against jamie i don't know what jamie's playing tonight hey guys this is a metro grid um oh man totally going double streams yeah chads you can do it double streams is a thing you can see both sides it's like we're playing with hands up hey do you wanna let spectate um is that worth doing six c hands that might be a thing um, I don't know what to play tonight. What we wanted to do is honestly play um, a deck or a card that's probably not that great, but I've been having a bit of fun with it, and that's Wari, which you're not going to see a picture right there. Wait a second. Oh, man, it's so easy right now. Uh, with Wari, you can balance cards. It's really fun. This is my 419 deck, and it's really slow and probably bad. I honestly think this deck would be better in... Uh, Tarmis, links are allowed in chat. Uh, would be better in... Um, silhouette and i want to build a silhouette deck tonight but otherwise this is just probably not good enough um i know jamie a lot of times likes to play a lot slower decks loves the nancy loves the pawn it loves the glacier stuff i don't know if they've been playing sso too much um if that's the case i think we'll just try sunny sunny's generally like pretty good across the board teaches you good fundamentals you can get rushed out really hard if against the sso matchup but i don't know if jamie plays a lot of rush decks let's just start there chad do we have any better ideas that we want to play Probably doesn't make Jane Nug look fantastic. Multi twitch.tv. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can do that. Only if they're obfuscated links to Canadian bacon pictures. Back bacon in these parts. Uh, I think that's good. Otherwise, this is a really fun deck you've seen on stream before. It's the triple DDoS uh, time thing. Jamie's hair is cooler than yours. I think Jamie just did their hair. Don't know what it looks like. I haven't seen it. Um, looks like Wizard. I can't open the stream now. Anyways, I think we're just going to play Sunny. It's just like good. This is pretty good. What happened? Jamie Lee? If Warriors can get in HQ, hope your remote had three eyes. Yeah, the thing with Warriors is that you can do that on HQ. You can do Warry, and then you can do uh, like Maxwell James. And it's honestly not bad with Inside Job. Like it's actually really fun to, we gotta get out of that, to, to oh, we're now a run. Yeah, we always were running. Um. We'll do 419 after this. We'll build a deck, Remy. All right, P. Fuck. Okay. Glad we didn't do 419. Psychic fields for days. Okay. This is personal evolution. Core set. Whenever you do damage, do every score on agenda, steal an agenda, do one net damage. I imagine how these decks have changed. Jasminder Serene. I keep saying that name. Oh, not Jasminder Serene. I keep doing it wrong. Rashida. Not Jones. Rashida Jones is an actress. It's Rashida Yahim. I'm gonna... Oh, boy. Um, this hand's not that great, right? Like, none of these cards help us in the early game. A code gate breaker is not as nice as a sentry breaker. You can't really play this against a lot of damage decks. It just does four damage to yourself when you install it. And I mean, this is an easy mulligan. They kept their hand, which is kind of intimidating. Uh, this is good, though, because we can't burst die. All 
and see how this goes. Rashida Tostitas Bonita Shakita. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm gonna goof that name up for a long time. All right, so they're not pushing things off too fast. Um, none of these cards are really great openings. This is probably slightly better than the other hand that we mulliganed out of. We can always just like baby up and play the slow game. They also could be on Obakata Punitive Counter Strike. We're not playing Film Critic, mind you. I think we're playing Tapworm, and that kind of sucks. One of our best cards in this matchup is Access to Global Sec, which. No, Global Sec Security Clearance, that's what it's called, which lets you see the top of R&D, which is dope. We also have a 50-card deck, which kind of helps against these sort of strategies that try to hurt you a bunch. All right, we have that Code Gate Breaker we talked about not being that great. We also have two Currents if they do play... I don't know if these decks a lot of times just run... This hand's pretty bad. Let's just hammer HQ. I don't know. Do you have a Wood deck that isn't the Mopus turn one trick? Yeah, Cheshire, I've actually... I don't like Mop... This is fine. Um... This is okay. Uh, I honestly don't play a lot of Mopus uh, decks. All my uh, my Wu decks have never been Mopus based. Uh, we've been playing a lot of like origami stuff. All right, you want to see a really short game? Hell yeah, we're running this. Now this is an Obakata. It's pretty bad, but like worse, this does four damage. Don't need any of these cards. I feel like that card's good in the matchup. Let's go! Do all the brain damage! Okay, that's good, great. Um, <laughs> right there, this is good too. I feel dirty stream step. I'm not stream stepping, I don't know what's going on. I generally run stuff. Oh, you're motioning a card? <sighs> Bloody. Joke's on you, I run everything. Oh, wait, it has four. That's four counters. No, 100% we still do that. Yeah, Yomi. You can't Yomi me. Oh, this is good. This is good. All right, so we have hand size of one. Um, they can afford snare. This is good. Um, freedom then go. <laughs> uh, all right, so a lot of things will kill us. We always have to do draw, draw, run. JNet skews results for kill decks because people are more willing to run and lose quickly. Andre every stream. Poglos, I thank you for putting that in chat. I wish I had a button to do that because that's all the time. It's like against PE decks. I'm just I'm going to run. Uh, none of these cards matter. We'll hit the snare. We gotta always draw once though. Fantastic. We always uh, that's the one we wanted. We always have to be able to draw once because um, this looks like they're on Hardy the News. Why else would they play that unless they're playing Glacier? Uh, at any point in time in this game, unless we get a sports hopper down, we die to double neural. We only have one sports hopper in the game. Legwork or riot? That's what we'll do when the game's almost over. Right? So now the problem is as soon as we draw, we have to like just slam down. That's a really good draw. It's the chance that we draw another card that we can play is really low. Ooh, Fraglid, what's up? If you run every server against P or P, you either win or you don't have to play against P or P for long. That's probably right. How's it going, by the way? Yeah, they had the Ice HQ. That's the legwork stream snipe, right? Building the remote server. Data loop, mind you, is really hard for us to deal with. That's why we have Nexus. Now, we can slow them down a bit. I guess we just dump everything we can. So we'll run archives, install, install credit. Like, we don't have a lot of choices with one hand size because we have to get as much value out of our hand. There's a chance that this is wrong. Cortex lock also is like a problem. Kamainu isn't. Neural Katana. DNA tracker. This gets us through Kagugo, which is definitely in this deck, so definitely want it. Thanks, Frag Leader, for those beautiful words. We got a deck. We got a game ahead of us. We really need that card that just lets us see the top of R and D, and then they just dump all their Kakugos there, and then we try and not win. Oh, they're not purging. That's okay for us. And they're probably throwing out a breach dome. So, all right. Oh, that's the card we needed. Everything is good from now on. We will never hit a snare. Sentry breaker, barrier breaker. What else could you need? A Kogate breaker and an Nexus would be good, but like, come on, we got five credits. All right, card in remote server. Can't run that one anymore because we can't see the Obakadas. So we're gonna see the top of the deck. It's Kumainu, well, that's good. So we can lose one card here. Eh, just run HQ. They spent a big ice there. You may don't have money for this. 
False lead. Seems good. Lost the card we wanted. That's fine. Uh, snare can be lethal. So if we want to run again, we have to draw. That being said, we've hit one snare so far. So we'll go again. Cortex lock can break. It's all about snare. So we lose the snare right here 100% of the time. But like, I don't want to throw this card out. Ninja Mike, what's up? Walked away to get a snack and suddenly have four brain damage. Oh yeah, we lose the click. Yeah, you're totally right. I'm not doing this at the time that JNet wants us to. Neural EMP. Oh, good, 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 good. We ran. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, we have to lose the click to that. I don't do that right. Thanks, chat, for pointing it out. Oh, GG. That, that was good. Yeah, I think if you hit this, it's pretty bad. Our other option was never run, which is pretty great. Oof. All right, we got to switch sides. Again, we don't have anything planned for this. I want to try the Rash of Decisions deck. Let's see if this is a strictly upgraded version. So we've seen this one. It has a 0% win rate, so it's probably like really bad. Um, luckily, this one has a, it's the superlative, which means, you know, good things for everyone. Um... I know Jamie plays a lot of criminal. Play a real yellow deck. Okay, now we're calling things real and not real. Sounds like some gatekeeping, MA. Don't click on that link though. It opens up here. What's brave? Oh, don't worry. It opened it in the other one that doesn't work, so. I don't know what's up. Why is this a real deck? All right, it's an Azmari deck, Consulting, Economic Warfare. I don't like Bias reporting that much. Rashida, this looks like a fine deck. That's probably a pretty good Glacier deck. I wouldn't mind playing this. I think three Bias reporting is never good. But I might be wrong. This is the best card. Consulting, two Economic Warfare. That's interesting. Gabe, all right, so he's on Perfume Gabe, Perfume Shop Gabe, which makes his hand great because we have an ice for uh, HQ. We just want one from our guys, but Jamie loves uh, perfume, perfume Shop Gabe. That's something that runs Eater and then just plays sack security testing and just slams HQ. I don't know if he's on bank job or they're on bank job, excuse me. Um, but we have money turn one and we can ice up HQ. This is actually kind of scary against Gabe because if they get it up. <laughs> Try and find the Cerebo. Uh, that's a really good hand. There's a chance that we overdraw with this and then Gabe punishes us real hard. So we definitely put an ice on HQ against Gabe. Gabe, two credits. R Remy, I'm not open up YouTube links. That's definitely not happening. How do you know Perfume Shop now that the shop is rotated? I don't think the shop was ever part of a Perfume Shop. It was just Eater. Uh, this goes in a new remote. And I think this goes in a remote too. I don't think uh, they're going to contest turn one. I might be wrong. But it's generally a pretty slow deck that needs to get up. That's pretty good. We don't have a current. Oh, yeah, that's 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 a card. That's definitely a good card. That means we need ice up centers. They found the right one to hit right now. That's the um, maybe it's not the best one. What they're gonna want to trace this because this cost them like five credits of trash, right? They also find the true thing, uh, but they're not gonna be able to run R and D. I guess they see what they draw. I think you definitely want to trash this, but then you just float the tag. But with the float the tag, find the truth dies. So like we could spend a lot of money just to make sure find the truth stays dead. It's boom, boom, boom song. I'm not opening that, Remy. Perfume Shop without Account Siphon. Yeah, Account Siphon has to come back. And I think this deck is like, we played it before. I think we've had this matchup before on stream. Oh, wow. They're, they're doing it. Okay, so they have seven. So we spend all our money. puts us on eight. We don't want to spend all our money. We could spend three, putting it at seven. So they spend all their money and they lose that. Yeah, that's 100% right. Um, yeah, without Account Siphon is a lot worse. You still have some good D-Res effects. Uh, you also don't have Keyhole, so yeah, it's definitely a bunch worse than it used to be, but it's still technically possible. All right, so they spent all their money. So we get that, which is really good. Uh, top decking the hard-hitting news would have been the best thing. We want an ice for R&D as soon as possible, because find the truth. We also want to draw into hard-hitting news. Raven on R&D is probably good enough. Uh, we can put that R&D. We can put this into a new remote. We just need to keep two credits. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, this filters our draw, so we won't fill with HQs. 
with agendas so that we get punished from legworks and stuff and this is only good once they put down their breaker so we want this on orange orange d and put this on the new one server we won't res this for an end to run i don't think they have indexing you have no pet tag punishment we don't yet but we'll draw it what's well, the twitch account for 419 and moral scam right? it's known so they're checking hq here we 100 res this uh, it does a trace which gives the tag which is fantastic because they have to do credit 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 clear it they can run r d whether or not they know how many copies of kitty we're running that's that's different but they now have a tag when they want to protect this well they actually can't so it looks like they're going all in hopefully they find the one quantum kitty because now they're losing this and this is a three influence card and that's abysmal you don't want to lose that so we definitely trash that Mind you, this current is on and it is annoying. We haven't been playing around that enough. Uh, we could ice up archives and that puts us in a pretty good spot. They're pretty far away from jamming their um, their Snake Door Beta, which would give them money back. Like Snake Door Beta only costs them two credits. So they do Snake Door Run HQ and that's not terrible. We want to get this up too. We could have considered resing it. I don't know if we had the money. I don't think we did. I think we got the money from this. Oh no, we definitely did. We should have res that. Uh, so I think we just click for credits. This is going to slow us down a bit, but when they have not a lot of credits, there's not a lot of stuff to install. Somebody tell Andre is bad at yellow. I'm not great at yellow. I'll be honest. I'm really not. So they're going to go deep in the tag me tank. That makes a lot of sense. You want to get that down. You can't ice that up, but now they're floating tags. We don't have boom. So we're just going to have to like get good ice and they never play resources, which I think they're on a lot of resources. Like security testing is the majority of their economy. So this is going to be rough for them. We can barely afford to res that. Okay, that one pointer wasn't that great considering uh, they have decided to go tag me. This ice is now a lot better. I think we just want to put this on our archives, click for two credits. Next turn, we can do a bunch of credits and install hedge fund or play hedge fund. And then we can consider building a remote server of pretty big depth. They're also, I think, on two or three. Uh, we don't want to raise that. Single axis is fine. Two or three femme fatales, which is kind of hard to play against. It makes our data ravens relatively bad, but they're going tag me. So it doesn't matter that much. Luckily, I think we're running maybe one toll booth. But also, I know Jamie specifically has a pet card, Love Scavenge, which is really good reinstalling Fems. Why are they doing that twice? Did they trash something? Oh, they credited and ran back. Ooh, that's awkward. Okay. So, exchange is really good, but having an ice for the remote server is probably even better. Uh, this on the table is pretty good at one point. We definitely want to be clearing the hedge fund and getting that out of the way. Uh, we want to res this at some point, but this is pretty good for our remote server considering they're heavily tagged. Now, we're not rushing, and on the table right, right now, it's very easy to be like, I give up, I'm tagged. But the fact that we can't capitalize on anything too quick, like imagine we didn't have hedge fund. How many turns we're clicking for just shit credits while they could be clearing the tags? So, I don't know. What's your pet card, Andre? Project Atlas is the card I probably play the most. You can only install hedge fund with asset group. Yeah, hopefully we can see some good remote ice coming up. That's pretty good. We're controlling our draw relatively well, which is great. We don't want more agendas. And this team sponsorship is also relatively good. Now we don't have to even do like high risk plays. We can just jam all our Beals and our, our other one pointers through the, whatever that fast advance card is. That sucks. That's the one. So we could jam this, but I don't think we want to score anything until we have this guy go in our, uh, our sports team. Just because then we can recur our other economy assets that they spent so long trashing. It looks like they're going to clear the tags now. You definitely clear the tags right here. Oh, they're not clearing the tags. That's a sponsorship. Trashing it. They're actually going to tag me. I thought they would totally clear at that point. Okay, so that thing is, if you're not, if you are going tag me, you need to keep low credit amounts because at any point in time, close accounts is pretty strong, and we don't have that actually. I think this deck list doesn't specifically have close accounts, so it's all about exchange, which we did shuffle back, definitely regrettably. Uh, that was probably wrong actually. But like, yeah, our our ability to make economy isn't that strong. And next turn we can get this out. If we pre-install it, it doesn't do anything better. But we can not calibration testing doesn't matter. Uh, we can protect it with this, but this is also not that good. If they're gonna get through this, they're gonna be probably having less than five credits, let alone to trash this. So the order of the maxing matters a lot. So I think we can just take that. We can also put that on R and D once we need to. Andre is only good with green stuff. I'm particularly the best with the green stuff. 
Oh wow, this actually really hard heavily punishes um uh it makes ip uh what's it called really bad endless eula but we don't have that one so this one we res to give them a tag we're definitely going to do it even if it costs us more i don't know how you do that do we just now pay two but this is going to give them another tag which makes the psycho beal a win plan turn seven we'll be in shape for a score by 14 yeah right yikes and now we turn this off so these also seem a bit anti-synergistic. Oh, Jamie really likes this card, though. I'll let them score one, because if they steal food, it's fine for us. I don't want to pay four for that right now. We need our money to fast advance and do other meaningful stuff. Wayland is teal, syncopate. I think teal is technically correct. Okay, hardening news doesn't matter that much, but having end the run ice seems way better. And they have four tags, so we could, like, do a big 5-3 beal. There's some value in that. I don't think they're going to start clearing tags anytime soon. So even if we res this, it just means more tags, which is pretty sweet. Um, putting this on R&D is probably pretty good. It slows them down and makes sure they won't have more than five. Otherwise, we can jam the food in here, which is probably fine. The problem is that like, we we can't shuffle our deck. We did put the one exchange, God, one exchange on the bottom, which was probably a huge mistake. I'll be honest. So we have no shuffle features. Oh, no, we do. We have a preemptive. Yeah, so we do have one shuffle. That's kind of cool. Uh, this on the remote server is pretty good. I, I don't know what else we'll do for the rest of the turn, so drawing is fine. This is actually a pretty good ice for... Um, yeah, we just don't have enough money. Uh, pretty good ice for R&D. Yeah, psychographics is good value. We could just like be very, very, very uh, greedy and go for the big 13 tag bill. It's probably not good enough. You can fast advance food right now. Uh, with Psycho, we could, but it'd be all our money. I don't want to do that. If you had Boom, you could win yeah yeah oh shash cortez since they're floating tags i think we'll probably spend less money on cortez than what cortez is because we play two hedge funds they're trashing all our like assets so we basically just play assets they trash them and eventually we build out this we trash we gotta trash that one we just don't have good enough economy we just don't have an economy my friends where did our economy go? Andrew, what's up? Shoot the moon, seven point bill. Yeah, shoot the moon. Actually, that's, oh, they're clearing tags. Changes everything. Gotta, gotta do something. Oh man, shoot the moon. That's a fun card. It's still in rotation. Best in blue sun. Two bad mid seasons rotated. I love that deck. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Okay, so they're in a real hard spot. They did clear one tag. Which probably wasn't the best thing to do right there. Yeah, I think you want to clear all four tags in the same turn. That's hard, though. Because you are uh, get closed accounts if you do float the like eight credits. All right, they're running Archives. There's no reason why we would res that. I think they're playing Mining Accident. Seems like a mining accident turn, which means we definitely don't res that. If they have bad pub, it makes all the traces a bunch worse. I think we just take, like, we pay five. Because I don't see how they win without bad pub. Because they have no economy, so we'll just pay five here. They can't play a second one. These turns are going to be good. Oh, Rashida is super sweet. We just don't have money. <laughs> I think trying to see that sponsorship is, like, totally the right play. Man, I love CTM. Now, this might be a commentary about how I'm playing, but the CTM look busted right now. You really need to snowball. Okay. Ah. Oh. So we could jam the Rashida. We could do Rashida into this. I feel like there's more flexibility putting this on other servers. Uh, paperclip, you have to get through this for seven, so they're pretty far away from doing that. We could start fast, we just, no, we need this to fire. I don't want to ice it, I don't, I'm not going to spend three credits protecting Rashida to give us three credits, that's not how we're going to fix our problem. We're also going to, like, overdraw, so maybe we should have put the Mumbed Virtual Tour down that turn. There's a sneak door. Gotta res that. They could go tag me now. Steal one Beal. They're doing it. All right. 
They're doing it. They're in. They're making two credits. Hit that Virgil tour. That's fantastic. Okay. We just need 13 credits. <laughs> and not to lose both Beals. Psychographics. Oh, that's a scary one to see. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Did I hit the wrong button last time, too? Wait, we gotta check that. Okay. Add a power counter. Add a power counter. Wait, I think we goofed it. Yeah, we th think we goofed it. Wait. I think we goofed it. No, huh, did we? Can't res Raven? Ra Cortez is only up when they have we have more than 10 credits, so we're fine. That's why these don't work together that particularly well. So if we want mass draw here, we can just draw agendas and it's pretty bad. Um, the amount of tags actually matters pretty good. And I don't know if we... We might have been short one tag. Hmm, that's preemptive. That's actually pretty sweet. So I don't want to raise that. If we click for three, we're just going to lose two of them. We could do click two. Oh man, we just need money. I think we just click two and install that. And then we're going to go down to one if they install a card. We also want to block this up. I think we can just give them the tags and put a, a an enigma on there. But we can't do that this turn. So I think that's our next turn. Uh, preemptive also is better later in the game. Quite. Uh, later in the game when um, we played our exchange and we need to play it more than once. So maybe actually holding on to that is better. You can dump Beal and shuffle it back next turn. I want to kind of want to keep both Beals though. Because they'll probably steal one and we'll get the other one. Yikes. This doesn't feel good. I don't know where we jam this. Honestly, don't know what the play is. I don't have enough experience with CTM, huh? So we can do two credits. Uh, putting the hedge fund back seems like the best thing we could probably do right now. We probably don't need the exchange if we have the Psycho in hand. Also, playing the Psycho twice is an option. Whatever, we'll lose one Beal. Hedge goes back, Hedge goes back. And I actually like this one. They can trash this one easily. Burst draw is pretty good. Maybe it's wrong. Maybe you want to keep those in there for team sponsorship. Sega's not so scary. Yeah, we're in zero credits. It's not honestly that scary. So we can res the turnpike, which makes them lose the credit and gives a tag. We also just shuffled R&D, so agendas are more likely to be at the top. Remember, you gotta not put links like that in the chat. That doesn't look good, man. Uh, we just let this through. If we have three credits, we can put Enigma on that R&D. That seems worse or better than this. Okay. Okay. So we're at nine tags, which means that we can get this up to a uh, five point BL, if I'm not mistaken. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Pretty good. Dirty laundry coming in here. That's just for the money. They're not going to be trashing that. So that's three credits. They haven't installed a card this turn, which is actually pretty good for us. And we can dump our hand in Rashida. If we fire Rashida also, then we, if we draw a hedge fund, we can play it. I think we need a Rashida right now. Let's just put the, the Beal on here because this server is actually looking pretty good. Oh, we got to put one thing back. It has to be one of the cards we drew though. The Mumbed Virtual Tour is kind of nice now that they have the credits. The Resistor is like, like by far the best card we have right now. We also have now more than five credits so that we're, we can play around their, uh, their bad pub card. Uh, we'll just bury that. It's fine. Oh, it has to be one of the first. There, right. It has to be one of the first four. Hard hitting news seems really bad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll give the runners some tags. Oh, that's the wrong one. So that's enough. We actually could have left it there. And then the run on this server is also pretty good. Um, giving them more tags is pretty good too. I just don't think we'll ever pay for it for the Raven. Oh, 
That's probably safe enough in there. I'm gonna live to regret that. And I think that we're probably gonna just Psycho Beal out before we ever hit the toll booth. So we'll throw that one out as well. We don't have closed accounts. You need more self-growth program. I don't even remember what that one does. Why'd you keep food? Uh, if they hit food, we have an exchange, which is not bad. Simple thing coming down, that doesn't actually amount to much inside job. Simple thing, dirty laundry is pretty bad value. And they're going for that. So this resistor is gonna be trace four, which they could actually break. And it's not that bad for them to do it considering they get two back. I don't know why they got a click back. Why'd you get a click back? Yeah, maybe that wasn't good enough on its own. Hit the Mumbad virtual tour. So what do they do? Draw, install. Oh, they sneak door twice. Okay, cool. So the Nigma here doesn't fire for much. I think we can afford the Turnpike. Turnpike robs them a credit, gives them a trace. So it's basically... No, I think we just want to... If we draw our heads, well, we can play it. Yeah, I think food and archives is perfectly fine. I guess it's all the same old thing, so we lost the credit. That makes a lot of sense. And DBS is doing so much work, I think they have to trash this because then HQ gets bad. Because right now, we're besides the Rashida fires, we're never going to draw an agenda. Right? Oh, we actually could fire that just to like turn the current off. It's also a really good agenda score. I think we'll do that. They can just same old thing the current, which isn't great, but with two credits, we're good enough. I also totally forgot we have another food in that server. It turns the current off. They could do same old thing current. It also gives us like the best agenda to exchange of information. So now that the food in archives doesn't seem that great. And they're just playing another current from hand, which is fine. So we're down on one credit. Run R&D for free if you'd like. Nine tags. So yeah, with nine credits, we can do a fast advance five. So this we can't block. We want to top deck another resistor. We have two more in the deck. Actually, no, I think we have less in this version. No, we do. We have all of them. That's the hedge fund we want. So we have to throw a card out. We might as well install it somewhere. Uh, this on R&D gives us the best value because they can never like, click out of it. So we'll just put this R&D click for two. We're probably going to go down to two credits when they install a card, which means we can't play this for two more turns. They actually might want to check server four, but I guess they don't have any breakers. Right? Imagine if this deck had hedge funds and IPOs, it'd be so much easier to close this off. But so much of this is about like, you know, tempo. Putting Psycho out of reach by getting too many tags is a pretty funny strategy. This is up to though. Psycho doesn't mean as many tags as the runner has. So you can never go out of reach, Pablos. It's equal to or less than the number. Oh, they didn't install anything. That's super good for us. This Quantum Kitty is dope, but this is definitely better. Quantum Kitty actually might have been better because it's the last agenda point that we need to like Psycho Beal out. That probably is wrong. This one forces them to interact with us though. And we need more money more than we did Kitty. Going for the sneak door again, we're not drawing a lot. They hit the BL, that's the best one. They can only afford to run HQ once a turn. Oh, let's do the trace here. They might actually be firing off for a mining accident, which I think will... That makes this one card in. Hmm. Okay. Great. Hit the BL. Always feels good for them, no doubt. But we can cycle BL out next turn. I think here we're going to take the bad pub, because we can cycle BL out. Nah, we pay five. We'll play the slow game jam this next turn. They have no credits. Yeah, we'll pay five. Reverse hedge fund. What are they shutting down? That for two? Okay. Uh, do we res this? Yeah. It's going to be slow recovery. Close that six point BL. Even closer now. So we don't want to draw because we can draw into agenda. That's pretty bad. They have no credits though. So like at this point, HQ is pretty safe. This is going to be hard to contest. So if this gets through, we're in a really good spot. So this is going to help us recover more. Giving the bad pub is actually really bad because it it's so much economy and all they need to do is run right now. And so many of our things that keep them out of servers is just traces and that's not going to do it. I just don't want to have the bad pub. It also lets them contest this so much easier. And they need to do credit credit run this. Puts us on 11 if we can credit three more times. And again, it just keeps going on and on and on. This is a really scary card. I'm getting better at playing around it. Not so much with criminal decks, but like an Anarch decks. I play around this card more, especially when it's a matchup like this that has trace and assets. 
not going to be a quick game. Virtual Tours on Mumbai Bankers doesn't matter that much, MA. In any other matchup would be good, but with their accessing it, they're not going to have five credits. So we don't need to protect it. Another card in HQ is better. It's a predictive model. This does look like the very obvious quantum predictive model, but I think if we had a QPM, the quantum predictive, we'd keep it in central servers. We'd keep it in HQ because we know for sure they're going to run that. We don't know for sure they're going to be running server eight. Oh, they're going for the inside job here. So we res the Enigma that stops everything. I think we want to do that. We can still recover next turn with the commercial bankers group. So this is fine. They can jack out here. They don't need to take another tag. Fire? Like, they should be jacking out here. This, yeah, okay, cool. So this is going to fire, which is great. QPM would be another good cosplay for Worlds. It'd be really great. Don't want that. Yo, actually, Twitch, this is totally... YouTube, too. Mm, mostly Twitch. Sorry about that, YouTube. Um, I'm looking to get... I was offered a long time ago a partnership with Twitch, which means we can do a subscribe feature and have some nicer features for chat. And I need to make some, uh, like, emotes. And I think I've asked this to chat before, but basically we got to come up with, like, ideas for emotes. Um, I thought that I could Quantum Kitty, but I don't play that card a lot. I was thinking, like, Amaku, having a nice turtle head would be, like, a pretty good way to, to start that off. But if you have any good ideas for, like, emotes, I, we can't use anything that's, like, licensed. Like, I can't use the Wayland W because that bl belongs to not me. They have to go trash that. Um, but you see the idea here. Uh, we have to, uh, we got to come up with something. All right, how many tags they at? They're at 11 tags, which makes this... Oh, that's enough. With just 11 credits, we win. Bold. Emote idea. Snare is a good one, Cheshire Cat. I, th I think Snare is really good. I like Snare a lot. Oh, that's good. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, so we just need more money. I think we install click for two. Actually, installing this doesn't matter. I think just clicking for three is better than installing this shit. Because if we get to 11... If we get end of turn with 10, we can do credit install cycle. We're fine. Jackson Howard face. Oh, that'd be cool. The credit symbol, I don't think we can use specifically because it, it's like not my symbol. If they steal any agenda here, it's fine because we exchange it. This is fine. King and yellow symbol is a bit off brand. I like that one a lot though. A prefix would you use for the emo? It's like Metro goofed. <laughs> Madrid goofed or something. Yeah, goof got to be an emote. They hit the Mumbad virtual tour. They see another card, not an agenda. That's fine. Exchange click back 15 minutes. You only need a five point Beal. If we lose the Beal here, the obvious bag baiter emote, please. The amount of times I play the card. They same old thing inside job this. Okay, this is good. Okay, yeah, you're right. We can do exchange. Yeah, no, we win. We win. We win. We win. Dug your apathy. We win. Okay, so the cool turn here is we exchange, putting us on two, install for nine. Yeah, that's enough, right? I think the credit symbol definitely belongs to them. Um, Thinking? I think that's it, right? Like a nine point Beal. So nine point Beal, so it's five is three, seven is four. Yeah, that's it. So that's enough. Uh, new remote, psycho, all our money. Score, exchange, hey, good game. I did. Yeah, man, money, huh? Yeah, we definitely have it. We have the exact money. The only question is whether FFG wants to stop them. I don't want to anger FFG. The thing that we're already doing here is in an FFG gray space. So as much as possible, you want to come up with as few reasons about, of, um, of like games um of uh, like making them need to consider coming after someone maybe the foul skull to spam when cards feel broken some kind of stylized run would be a good emote that's actually a really good one it's like pretty good ambiguity ambiguity the the run emote things like that are probably good but like what makes sense like what's something that we'd use in chat be like oh wow this is a good time to hit this don't know if i did a whole lot i think you would have been okay had you cleared tags early in the game. 
There was a point you trashed a sponsorship. I think that was your last time to consider clearing. Because it took me a dozen turns to do anything. Some kind of beans. This makes a great TV. No stream on Thursday. VK, what's up? Um, yeah, no stream on Thursday this week. We're doing uh, Tuesday. We're doing a Tuesday stream. If you're just tuning in, my name is Andre. We've also been streaming since 8 o'clock, which is cool because this is about the point where the YouTube video cuts in. What up? How to keep you poor. <laughs> yeah, new account seven's coming in at some point. These get a lot better. DDoS emote. Oh, the DDoS emote. The DDoS already is really good. It's Joe Chip, good night. It's late, early here in Norway. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by. Enjoy the rest of your week, eh? An A emote. Cards in hand. That's a really good one. I, the thing is, like, we can only use, like, I think it's like 32 pixels, 127 pixels, like, scale, so it's really hard to put all that in there. But cards in hand, man, that's great. Hey, cheers. Okay. So this is a fine time to start the thing that we wanted to do anyways. Uh, and that is, let's play some criminal decks. We got to open up this one and start talking about stuff. So check this out. This is 419. Sounded like a fire alarm. Uh, one second. A 419 just came out in the last data pack. It's a criminal that wants to expose things. And there's a lot of cards that work well with it. I don't think this is a good 419 deck. This is two decks combined into one deck. What's up, Devcon Mason Jar? Yeah, that's on brand, I guess. Um, the problem right now with Criminal is there's not that much time. A Mason Jar with Diesel or not. I like that a lot. Uh, there's not that much reason. To, I like that a fair bit. There's not that much reason to play Criminal right now, I don't think. So, 419 says, we don't have an art here. Yeah, 32 is the smallest one, I'm pretty sure. Like, there's a bigger version, but, like, that thing has to be readable at 32 by 32, so you can't do, like, a lot of words. I like the diesel one a lot. Um, okay, the first time a Corbin installs a card, he may expose it, and that's pretty great. Uh, I gotta reslate. Sorry, chat. I'm, I'm looking down a bunch. Hey, Zach, what's up? I feel we need to think of symbols we can spam to remind you for things like use exchange or short credits. Yeah, short credits are good. Oh, man, there's one that always comes up. Ah, oh, fuck. There's one that, like, continually goof it up. Oh, I don't remember. Well, well, I guess that means... It makes sense why. Uh, I don't remember. So, this is 419, and this is a card that came out recently. It's called Wari, and Wari lets you bounce ice, and it doesn't have to be on a remote server. It's any server, and I originally wanted to try this card out because it seemed like a really cool way to contest a remote server, especially with there's a lot of SSO around. You see three advancements on a card bouncing, that gives you so much value. And this isn't specifically a great deck against SSO anyways, because it's really flimsy, but it seems like a fun thing to do. If you know what the ice is in the remote server or the central server, you can get in for free and for cheap and have one of those like cool recover turns where you slam a central server with Amakua to get counters. Now this isn't to totally uh, exactly uh, makes that much sense considering to get into the HQ in the first place, you probably want Amakua counters, but there's something here. Now what I found out putting more exposed cards into the deck, uh, I found out that it probably makes more sense if you want to do the Wari plan. Firstly, you also play Clone Chip, and by the way, Clone Chip Wari is nuts. Like that is way better than it looks. Uh, the idea with Clone Chip and Wari is you're running HQ, uh, you get to pull this out before you make a successful run, you get to bounce a card on a remote server, sometimes you have two Waris, you can make remote servers disappear. And if anyone's playing like uh, the classic score on remote server, Netrunner, this is honestly pretty good. And I think playing in silhouette, like Dr. Abbott said in chat, is totally the better way to do it. Yo, what up, Jamie? Good games. Um, that's totally better. You have a smaller deck size, and then you're always exposing things. There's a bit more guesswork when it comes to 419, which is why you'd run things like Deuces Wild. Uh, uh, that's largely it. And... Sometimes they don't pay credits, which I think a lot of times they will pay credits. So it's interesting. It gets a lot of things with uh, Amakua counters. A lot of them happen, by the way. Like, Amakua gets a counter with Wari because it is an exposed effect. Wari also fires Zambo, which is an exposed effect. So a lot of these things look good together, but I can't pull it off. Now, the other hand, part of this deck, which is not great so much, is that you're running this, like, Rubicon switch thing. And maybe we don't need three of these in this deck. 
But the idea with this deck is, and you've seen this before on the channel, with cards like GPI NetTap, when you encounter an unresed ice, you get to see what it is. So then you can jack out, maybe worry it later. But if you can just continually de-res it with Rubicon Switch, you're getting a lot of money. There's a lot of things going on here. It really does. Does worry work with tinkering? Yeah, 100% it does. Wari does. Um, it, it's honestly not that bad, and I think Wari clone chip was cool. Now, I also have a Cyber Cypher in here because criminals suck at code gates. I don't have a barrier, a fractor, which I think I need. I don't have enough special orders, so sometimes you just draw poorly. This deck is just really expensive overall. Like, all these pieces are very pricey, so, like, even playing modded in here is not bad. But I like the clone chip Wari. I think that's really, really, really fun. Um... We also have Maxwell James, which is like more worries. So you can contest like two or three remote servers. I think this deck had inside job. Like you can run HQ once and then contest the remote server with three ice and cost you like nothing. And it's pretty cool. Scoring a remote is fine right now. Yeah. And it also like deals with ice. Like a lot of people are running like data loop, data Raven, like really good, strong ice and Nancy that's hard to deal with IP blocking. You can kind of just like say, go away. And that's kind of fun. Problem is this deck is too expensive. There's too much shit going on. Not enough, just like basics. Like, I would love to be able to put three Drip Economy cards in here. Like, three Underworld Contacts with Maxwell James would be really good because this is very expensive and we just don't have the credits to do any of it. So, we got two choices here. Oh, another cool thing to do considering doing is, like, I was considering with clone ships and running HQ all the time, it might actually be really good to put in this deck either Exotid Eye, which works a lot of times with um, Corporate Grant, or Falsify or um, Lamprey because we're running HQ a lot and we can bring that back a lot over and over and over again. And that's cool. The problem is those are all viruses. We do have some influence that we could like put into sack cons, but again, more slots. But the problem is we're also running on Amakua. So they want to purge anyways. So it, it's a shame. There's a chance that you could do this build without Amakua, but it also seems really bad. That's pretty good regardless. Gila Hands Arcology mode is critical. <laughs> I feel like most runners have a single weakness they have to import cards for it. But Krim has to import just about everything. Yeah, that's the big thing is like Krim doesn't do anything really good right now. And these decks would be so much better once we have a new account siphon. Because not only does that give you money, it ruins the corpse economy. So keeping them down with things like Corporate Grant, Rubicon Switch. Like, this is going to be really scary. There's also, with one more influence, I consider doing this. Is instead of Cyber Cypher uh, running uh, David. And that was an interesting thing that I was actually really excited about running David with three clone chips. But there was a couple problems. Firstly, David technically isn't an icebreaker. So you can't special order it. So good luck drawing it. The draw on this deck isn't great. And also, um, it was hard to overinstall. You'd have to like use a clone chip or install a warrior on top of your spent David. It just wasn't good enough, but it's not endlessly a thing we could do because we're not using all our influence. Sorry, chat, one sec. I'm playing modded. Yeah, like the other option, I think 100% Jamie, if I wasn't running a clone chip Wari garbage, which I probably shouldn't be, and I don't need to say garbage, but like this is two decks jammed together. The Rubicon Switch Zomba deck with a GPI net taps and this Wari clone chip deck. And there's just too much stuff going together from two decks that always re already require too much support. So we're going to play one of these and then realize it's really, really not great. But if that wasn't the case, I think three modded is probably fine. And that costs you six influence on the clone chips anyways. Sai Sai, is it for SSO? Uh, it's largely for SSO. It's also because Amakua just can't deal with Hortum, but it, it's just a flexible card. Like I'm worried about with Amakua, I'm worried about uh, Archangel, Tollbooth. Like Sai Sai is just a good card. And with three clone chips, Sai Sai seems really good. Harrison Wood from YouTube, what's up? Acacia is one influence. I considered that. I had an Acacia here at some point, but then it's the 47th card. And I think it's honestly worse than a lot of other cards, which sucks. This is what I'm on by Mr. Orivor, Andy. What happened with Barrier Wraparound? Um, not a lot. You can bounce it. You can de-res it. Like, there's some bad stuff. We easily could put a Fractor in here. Again, I think this deck is doing too much at once. Like, if if we wanted to run the GPI net tab, we would just put a Fractor in here. But no, yeah, Wraparound is really bad. Luckily, Wraparound isn't that common, so I'm not going to play around it. Just, like, Turing on two remotes would be kind of bad, but what can we do? Uh, this is Jamie's deck. This is a GPI net tap deck. It's kind of NP. Yeah, almost all the GPI net tap recursion decks are like super NP. Um, they just kind of go over. I also want to put Leave No Trace in this deck if I could. It'd be really fun. Film critic classic. Turning Wheels also really good. That's an interesting one. Of I don't like this card. Yeah, that one's good. Two Rubicon's weird. I don't know what's right, right? Because like you want to get Rubicon down early unless you have other ways to de-res things like Brute Force Hack. I've seen other people do this run exploit, which I think is fun. Um, this is probably like a, this is a much better list that does just the, the whole GPI net tap. We're doing too much stuff. That being said, I've been playing this, like I've been playing this at lunch against SSO decks at work and it's so fun to like Zomba, Mercer, you feel like you're playing Leela. 
And that's maybe what Wari is. A Leela that's worse. Leela Trace is supposed to be Hernando Cortez. Fuck. <laughs> Never mind then. You can cut one corporate grant. You have a lot of uniques you're installing. Yeah, corporate grant isn't even that great. The thing is, like, you need a current because if they play scarcity, you kind of lose. But you have a lot of you do. They have a lot of singles. We do have clone ship and Wari. Maybe it's not the best. We'll try it as it is. Let's just keep your expectations in check because, like, it's it's, it's okay. It's not. Excuse me, one second. I need to blow my nose. But like, okay, besides that, right? Imagine, imagine you're playing against a silhouette and like you're scoring in a remote and all of a sudden it's like faint into HQ, which gets through two ice. And then like, it's it's clone ship into Wari and then like your ice gets blown up. Like it's, that actually is a lot of remote pressure, way more than it thinks. And you can even like bounce R&D indexing. Like there's a lot of plays that opens up when suddenly like any of your ice can disappear. This is just not the best deck of it. And maybe we're wasting our time here. Oof, excuse me. If you're just tuning in, by the way, my name's Andre. I keyed this to a button now, so like that's super easy, huh? Look at that, that's the future. Exploit is fun because people forget that it was ever printed. Yeah, and exploit gives you actually technically a lot of value as long as you can run all central servers, which you want to do anyways a lot of times if you have turning wheel, let alone if your Amaku is like just jacked. I still don't have a good answer to CVS, but... I keep hitting that button. I made the mute button way too easy to hit. I'll be honest. I like was super excited. It's like, I'm gonna make a mute button here. So then when, I don't know what happens. I got to mute real quick. And now it's like, it's so easy to hit. Oh, and it's cool. Also, how's it going? Sound check. Yeah, I didn't mute it. Uh, what I was saying is blockade runner, Rosetta 2.0. Otherwise I don't, I don't get it. Change the key map. I'm not gonna do it right now, but I'm definitely gonna do it. I'll change it. Doing well. Right now it's on the zero with the numpad, and that's like a pretty big button. And it's between the keyboard and the mouse, so like there's a lot of flyover. Okay. We're playing probably against a net damage deck. Like, you see how I'm on top of my game now with two monitors? Life is good. Mutate. <laughs> I'm okay, I hit my stop stream button mid-game. Oh no! Oh shit. That's rough. Um Okay, so. Don't have a lot of counter tech to net damage itself. Thanks, you too. But this opening is way better than it could be. We have the current turn one, not expecting a real current out of biotech. They could be playing in first curfew. We can earth rise down for cheap and then just click for credits. Also, the Zomba down immediately is pretty good because it makes expose better. Now, they could be playing psychic field, which um, sometimes kills us. So, do we expose acids? Probably. Probably all the time. I don't know. So if you're not familiar with this ID, oh, they're going to show us everything. Um, Biotech has three versions they can choose from. Punitive, back channels, hedge fund, and geo front. June bug. Okay. So there's three that they could be playing. One of them says put four advancement counters on a card. Based on the fact they're playing punitive, they're probably playing the one that says flip due to net damage. There's also one that says flip shuffle archives back into R&D, which sees by far the least amount of play, probably with trap ice. Any chance Biotech isn't on the damage ID? Sometimes, yeah, Nisei is really good with this ID and you can hedge fund out. Even like the, the what's it called, protein source, improved protein or whatever. So if we run HQ here, there's two really good hits, both the NGO and the June bug. Now, our turn is, this now seems pretty dumb when they're at 15 credits. That's the problem with this card. It's better with other account made denial, which we don't have. So I think we run HQ twice and then just jam the Earthrise. We want to hit the June bug and the NGO front. They represent things that we don't have to check in our remotes. That being said, we have falsified credentials. That's really good. So one to three for the NGO. Damn, we're good. So I think we just install this, take a credit. The tax with, with both 419 and this might add up, and I don't think that was goofy. 
I used to play FA in biotech. It was fun. You could get up to four and then score an improved protein source. Yeah, you could totally do it. Expose, yes. So they'll probably pay one for that. We don't know what this ice is. It's an Anansi. We now know what it is. And then another ice on this server. So we know there's an Anansi there. That's a big boy. But this is now the thing that we can worry because we know what that is and they're going to leave HQ open. There's also a chance they might goof and not play around Maxwell James, which would be pretty sweet. Okay, the big problem I'm having is that these cards look very similar to me. This one is not the current. This is like three quarter pose, dude, looking off to the. Okay. Gotta drop the Zamba to get your econ going. We got it, but it's also got a grinder econ to like a very quick halt. Like this, in theory, means that they'll probably just hide their shit, which they can afford to do. So this is not like a really good econ card right now. Cody, how's it going? Such steam greenhouse winning with protein. That'd be really sweet. This greenhouse? I think greenhouse is the shuffle one. I'm not sure. So this hand sucks. I don't want to play any of these cards. If we draw into a sure gamble, it'd be good. We got a worry, which I don't actually know if we want to show that we have that. We can install this click for two, which is really bad because we're going to be drawing up twice here. I think we can just play the clone chip click for two. Like, I don't know what else to do here. Lamille, what's up? Bedtime stream. How are you doing? Glad to catch you on a Tuesday. This would explain why this P deck I was playing was playing It's a Trap. Why would you play that ice? Yeah, It's a Trap. Oh, do we expose that? Hell yeah, we do. If it's a psychic field, we didn't run so we don't die. So they prevented that expose. Now we do have a lot of cards in hand, so if we hit this, we'll probably be fine. The thing is if we hit this and it's an Obakata, it does four damage and then they punitive us for one. Our hand's pretty bad right now. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that. I'm going. Wait, we can expose it first. Hell yeah. So what do we want the money on? Greenhouse equals four, Vance Breweries two, damage tank is shuffle. Fantastic, watching my busy play EVE Online and listening to the stream. I'm doing well, Cody. How's EVE Online? I never got into that thing. Seems like a lot of spreadsheets. I know people like it. Lamille, I think I'm doing well. I hope everyone else is doing okay. How are you doing yourself? You call an agenda on this one. Because if it's an agenda, we have more money. If it's an asset, we probably don't trash it. I think we've trashed two assets so far. The chance of it being an agenda is a bit higher. Let's do agenda. It's a Ronin. Okay, so we called that wrong. So we definitely have to go defuse that situation. I wish we had that four extra credits. Like that's a big whiff. And maybe it's because if we knew it was something to trashable, we always had to do that. Falsified credentials. Meta card, huh? I don't want to play any of these other cards because it really shows our hand a bit too much. I think we can just throw out a... No, Maxwell James is way too good. Play the current, install nothing. That's our life. Yo, Nick, what's up? It's Thursday, Tuesday night stream. How you doing, man? How you been? Cheshire in YouTube. I'm playing EVE Online too. Nothing better than watching Netrunner streams while making ISKO7. I don't know what that means. But I know EVE Online is like really well involved. Like a lot of stuff going on. Okay, so we drew a handful of crap because our deck has a lot of crap in it. We could slam central servers. Like drop the warrior strand there, bounce the Nazi, run R&D, but then they can put the Nazi on HQ, which is something we don't want. I think we can just run HQ here. We don't have a lot of money, so punitive is pretty good. That's a punitive we know about. Always call agenda. It depends. If there's ice on it, you always call agenda. If it's uniced, I think you always call asset. Yeah. Because if you call agenda, you don't need the money. I guess for punitive you do, but it was unlikely they had double punitive, let alone we had a lot of cards. Um... Okay, well this sucks. Card draws over. Okay, lose the credit. Chump. Um, this is really bad. Like we just don't have economy in this deck. This deck has like, this is the biggest econ card it has. Yikes, this is bad. Oh my God, why did we build this? We gotta stop this right away. I'm doing dandy, just got out to lunch with my girlfriend today and I finally got my sleeping meds so I'm gonna crash so right now. Hey, I hope the sleeping meds work out. Yeah, sleeping well is kind of incredibly underrated. I enjoy spreadsheets online for several years myself, but it got to be like a second job. I had, you can expose that if you like. Uh, one of my roommates in college was like really into, uh, what's it called? That football manager. Spreadsheets for days. And like having the ability to bounce both of these would be super good if we had like an indexing or something that wins the game. So this worry is probably bad. I'm so sorry you have to watch this happen. That's good, ish. Holy shit, can we just concede? This deck is ass, it's so bad. Who built this? 
Who built this? God, I got it. Why? Uh, what's the plan for firing warriors off successfully around HQ? We know what all this ice is. Just run HQ. It's all I got. Andre, I know exactly how you're feeling right now. As a longtime garbage crim deck builder, I'm glad that we have a support group here because it's probably necessary. Oh, look, a card. Is this one even good right now? No. It gains one credit, draws card. What's the thing we don't want to do here? Draw cards. Yikes. Man. Do we just draw really bad? No, this seems like a poorly constructed deck. We need four cards together. We can just special order for Amaku and toss them in the bin. That seems pretty bad. We've already been throwing out influenced cards, though, so. Wild. Or he's just worse than that. No. Oh, man. This is miserable. I don't want to do this anymore. Whatever. If you had your console on exposed, would be good. No, they'd just be paying credits. If we steal this, we die. Do we want to die? Doesn't seem that bad right now, I'll be honest. Game theory and all that. That sucks. We'll probably find one of our three turtles with this. Praise deuces. So we chose not to steal it. Always the right play. Yeah, if we had a console, yeah, you don't expose that silver card, right? So we either need to get more money than them somehow, <laughs> YOLO, or uh, it's an SSL endorsement. Okay, that one is much more palatable. So we could expose this, run HQ in the same click, and then worry it. That'd be pretty cool. But we have no way of making more money than them. We have to go now before they 100% have their double punitives. I think they have their double punitives, but regardless. Yeah, fuck it. We want card draw here. Seems more important than credits. Oh, good. Good, 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 good. It's a Kakugo. Check this value. If we hit a snare here. Oh, man. Yeah, we're gonna die to punitive. Use Wari? Hell yeah. The problem is with Wari, you even you you uh, access the card that you bounce. Back channels. Okay, so if they have double punitive, they win. Do they have double punitive? Likely. Is taking a credit here that important? Unlikely. But imagine their HQ pressure now, right? Doesn't the ID only make two net damage? Yes. They have punitive. We have a link though, so. Jokes on them. Yeah, we didn't have to do that. We could have won, but like, let's just build a better deck. Okay, so what we did drawn into. Cast, that's pretty good. Like, this was getting good, considering all the other cards in our deck were good, and we drew the ones that were the least good. Okay, let's build something. Oh, boy. Okay, so that did what we thought it would do, but let's build a 419 deck. So, 419, there's a bunch of ways to do this. There's two big archetypes right now. Uh, one of them is the link-based one that's running Power Tap, Citadel Sanctuary, and all that nonsense. Uh, basically, like the Timmy Wong deck of the week we played a while ago, just put in 419, that's it. I don't want to do that so much uh, because that's very similar to everything else uh, that's like that, and those IDs have been around or that archetype's been around for a while. Citadel Tap with Rogue Trading. So, yeah, that's one way to do it. Don't love that deck so much. Uh, it feels very passive. Uh, VK thinks that one is boss. I think it's definitely a good deck. But I want to go in to do the Amakua stuff. The Amakua GPI net tap D res stuff. Counter sentence. Not another power tap deck. Yeah, Cheshire, I feel you. Not another power deck. Draw seems like the weakest point for Grim. Everything seems like the weakest point for Grim. They don't have good breakers. They only have Amakua. Uh, they don't have card draw in faction. They don't have multi axis besides leg work. There's a lot of criminals not doing so hot right now, I'll be honest. But we got to figure this out. So let's build a deck. And generally when you build a criminal deck, for better or worse, there's some like common cards you need to put in here. Three Earthrise Hotels, this is really good. 
Uh, this is card draw. It's unconditional card draw. No, it gives you six cards, which is a lot. Now, you have another option in criminal, which you can do the math on this yourself. But if you have a better economy, drug dealer isn't so much uh, bad. Yo, Jamie, I have no doubt our lists are just going to end up being the same. Um, but this is a, a, a drug dealer. It's So the thing with Earthrise Hotel is you pay four and you can career fair it out to gain six cards. And you draw them two at a turn, which is a lot of times better than one at a turn. It allows you to deal with damage, but it also gives you more flexibility with your turn. Um, and this, if you pay four credits with this, you only draw three cards. Now, it scales on better than that, like at some, no, not even. This is the other option, right? And you can cancel this, like you can make it a two turn combo or two card combo. Back in the day, people used to run wild side, a card from the old core set, and they would mix that up with uh, pancakes. I honestly forget the name of that card right now. Adjusted chronotype which made you not lose the click. And that's a two card combo that costs six, but it gives you an Earthrise Hotel return. And in theory, you can be running uh, your drug dealer and then on top of it, either playing a card that gives you a credit every turn, something like uh, Data Folding or uh, Underworld Contact, or the other option is you could go in and actually just spend influence on, I think it's only one influence, on our friend here, Dr. Lovegood. And whether those are comparable, I honestly don't know, but that's probably not that bad. Drug dealer with Lovegood seems like a credit every turn for a two card combo, but it's not ass. Maybe we can do one drug dealer, two love goods, and try a new uh, draw suite that's better than Earthrise Hotel. Let's break some new ground here. I'd like drug dealer and counter surveillance Leela deck, but yeah, if you're not tagging up. I think drug dealer is fine even if you're not tagging up. How do we stop doing drugs though? We win. We win before we stop doing drugs. And if we're specifically sitting back and playing a, a deck that's like run, de res, run, run, and get turtle counters, having passive draw is probably that better. So let's try this. Drug Dealer is also good with Underworld Contact, both mechanically and thematically. I think it really is cool, both together. I don't think we need Aesops. I, th I think we're just going to build the, the... Did someone use Credit Cutting successfully yet? Yeah, Credit Cutting is really good, Cheshire Cat, in uh, the decks with Power Tap, Citadel Sanctuary. It's actually like a very, very strong card in that archetype. Let's try this. Let's try this. Let's see how this bad this goes for us. So, that's it. Whether Earthrise is still necessary, let's just go down to two. We might even cut all of these. Let's see how, how regularly this card, this deck draws. All right, so we need some money and we need to build in what our deck is going to do. Let's not try and pull hedge fund in there. Love good is really nice with the source. It is. We can try and get more value out of love good. We can play this. There's two big things that come to mind for me. One of them is the source, which we can blank this on our turn so that we don't have to pay three credits and this stays on the table all the time. Pretty good as a one up in the deck, I have no doubt. The other option actually is black file and this one's weird. <laughs> uh this one's pretty cool uh you can blank this so it doesn't gain power counters but we probably want to be blanking our drug dealer until maybe we're about to lose yeah i doubt that the source it might actually fit with our doing making a remote harder to get into is pretty good considering this deck is actually kind of slow also found a trimath contact trimath is not a bad card at all either it's like i don't know we can try and make it so as much as possible we don't click for things but we'll see how the deck goes Never thought of Black File with Source. Or, yeah, with Love Good. Black File Love Good is pretty great. It, it's, it, it technically works. Okay, so let's talk about what this engine is. So it hinges on three cards. And all these cards are like three ofs in the deck, which makes the deck get really bloated really fast. So you want Emakua because Emakua gets power with Exposed, and that's really great. On top of that, you can run things like... Uh, you want to run things like GPI NetTap, because now every time you hit an unresed ice... Um, Try that plus love good. Uh, if you hit an unresed ice, you get expose it, get a counter on your Abakua, and get credits. And so we'll play three of these. And what do you mean get credits? I mean get credits because we'd be playing Zamba, which gives us credits whenever, not the first time. So that gets broken really quickly. What do you think of a restricted card? Employee strike? I don't know. Probably employee strike. Um so we, I think we want three of these in the deck, and then it comes down to Rubicon Switch, and this lets us de-res ice over and over again, so we can always assure that something is face down, and that's really valuable because it makes us, it makes resing so bad for the corpse, specifically if they have ice that isn't punishing on the face check. So like spending four credits to res like a Turing, or six credits to res an endless EULA, and then we spend six credits to de-res it, is pretty rough. Um, considering that next time we run it, we gain three credits with all our GPI net taps in the best case scenario, that we'll never do it. Now, Jamie's been playing modded in his deck, and VK's saying I'm smelling like a supplier deck. Originally, when I've been playing this deck, I've been playing the supplier, and supplier is really slow and really clumsy. As much as we have so much consoles, and we have so much, uh, har sorry, hardware, and we have so much resources that cost two or more, it basically, it not only saves you two credits, but it pushes everything a turn later. And that's just proven to be a bit too slow. There's a chance we could do supplier and modded and career fair, and that might bring up the deck to speed, but I want to try without supplier. 
if there's any deck that looks good and it's probably this deck with supplier you load something on it comes off later but it's it's really slow compromised employee is no longer legal they win on your turn they do that's why you stop blanking it once they they have one yeah okay there's no way to install all your stuff skip the supplier yeah, i think it's modded emergent creativity doesn't make a lot of sense nothing that we're installing is that expensive so the gpi tab nine bet zed bet and then we need <laughs> we need rubicon switch question is whether you run two or three of these i like three of these because as soon as possible we start smashing to things we get money and i'll be honest this deck is probably just strictly better as los probably is strictly better as los if so much of this is going to be mathematical based off of what like, I, I don't get it. I think Los just gives you two credits when they res, which makes it easier to Rubicon things. Why is 419 better in this? I don't understand. I play a similar archetype out of Silhouette and use Proco on the Supplier, but the Supplier is really slow. Supplier is way slower than it looks. Jamie, I know you run two. I think it's really important to get us first. Maybe that's better with Los. Maybe with 419 you can slow down. But, like, 419 just slows the Corp down. It doesn't actually do anything well. I don't know. Throw an extra Rubicon switch to Zomba to fetch and install GPI Turtle for free. It is a double and cost five influence. We can't do that. Yo, Fioril Lossage. I have Fioril Lossage. How's it going? Source and Love Good is hot for sure, but we'll see how much influence we have. I think that's definitely something we can put in there. Los with EC sets up the combo faster. Yeah, Los seems better. Yeah, and Supplier is specifically slow with when your turn begins, and we have a bunch of those. Mind you, that seems fair. Okay. So this is the basic idea of the deck. Oh, also, you definitely need this just so that when you're running central servers that you get value out of it. 419 can give you a fast turtle when the corp is poor. If the corp is poor, your, tur your, your turtle is going to be so good because you just smash into everything with GPI net tap. So I'm not convinced. Now, 419 has a link over Los. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. This is Jamie's deck, mind you. Uh, Deuces is really good with the turtle. But again, like there's no, I don't see the reason to run four one nine in this. Besides, sometimes they'll give you credits with Zomba, but exposed matter. It makes falsified credentials. No, I don't. I don't get it. If falsified credentials isn't a reason to run a new identity. Like I don't even think we run three in a deck. I think you run two. Los is also so good with leave no trace. Are we building a four one nine deck? Did we give up a war? Yeah, we did. But we'll come back to that. We want to build a good Los four one nine deck and then go back to silhouette. 419 costs them money, Los gives you money. What's more important? I don't know. And that's what comes with testing, like slowing them down. The thing is, if they just expose everything for 419, you don't gain anything. Like this deck literally gains nothing if they say, no, you can see all our shit. It gains like uh, less credits than Los does. So to me, it doesn't make that much sense, right? Like if you just be like, install ice. Yeah, you know what it is. You have Amakua. I don't fucking care. Ice isn't that important. It's whether you can break it or not. And we're going to face check shit anyway. The GPN that time. I don't know. I honestly don't know. But we have something here interesting for sure. Okay. Do we want to run a full suite of actual breakers? We could definitely do that. And we have a couple options. We have the bypass stuff or we have the D-Res stuff. And the D-Res stuff makes more sense if we don't draw our Rubicons early. It gives us some access to that and lets us snowball our economy, which is pretty good. So we got Saker, which on its own is a fine card. And Abignail is generally a better code gate breaker than the other one. This doesn't let you D-Res. I think we might need have to do the whole cast of Falcons. I think slowing them down so you can set up. Like, you're using your clicks to set up while Los is using his clicks to run. The thing is, though, if you're running and they res ice, you set up faster, too right like if i'm running with los and they have to spend money resing their ice and then i get money for that that i was going to face check anyways that'll slow them down while speeding me up them spending an extra credit a turn which again i think in this deck they shouldn't they should just expose everything i don't think it does enough tarmis the original versions of this i played with flashbang in it it, it, it got cut kiros mcintyre helps the math a lot yeah i think we need to play two kiroses it might be too much though kiros is lovely with los um tapworm doesn't make that much sense in this deck vk considering we're going to try and bleed them of money depending on the ice you hit 100 depending on the ice you hit but like I th you face you have to face check ice so i don't know all right i'm feeling that sweet sweet so my good night y'all hey leave me all sleep well thanks for dropping by spot the prey yeah 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 it's, no 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 oh man i hate this card so much oh man there's a typo in it oh there's just so many reasons this, then the source, because you're going to be too slow. Yeah, I like the source. Okay, uh, we got to put a current in this deck. We could go ahead and put Employee Strike. 
If we want to slow them down a bit more, we could go ahead and do the, the what's it called? The corporate grants, which we do have a fair bit of things to install. A lot of them are unique, but we're going to be drawing once a turn. Uh, so allows another drug dealer. Mind you, all these drug dealers are dead too. So maybe corporate grant isn't even that better, good. I think actually employee strike might be strictly better. Let's see how much influence we have left over. Um, so what else do we need to put in this deck? I'm not sure how to make net tab better than 419 than Los or still. Yeah, I agree with you. I think Los 419 probably needs a link and other stuff to get going. Okay, d effects are pretty good. We can do it with our breakers. We have Saker, we have Golden, which is probably too much to install. I'd rather just install a Fem or a Mongoose. That's a more flexible card in a lot of situations. Um, and then the Kogate Breaker is either Abignail, which is not bad, or we can do the d one, which I don't know the name of. It's like Persephone, but not Persephone. What is it? Film Critic is good because it combos with Turning Wheel. That's really true. Yeah, Film Critic is another good way to do that. So many new cards. Page Piper. Yeah, Lilac. So the first time I played this deck, I had six influence on Page Piper. I'm pretty sure this time that we're trying it, we're going to spend most of our influence on Modded just because that seems fun. Peregrine. Thank you. That's why it's Persephone. Um, but yeah, before we did Page Piper in this deck, and I liked it a lot. Underworld Contact Data Folding. Just play Sunny, I guess. That we need Wari, right? Uh, Wari actually is not that bad. No, it's probably not great. So we're still short a bunch of cards. We need to get more cards in here. Uh, Deuces Wild makes sense with Amakua. It's technically like weak card draw. But I'm hoping with Drug Dealer we just don't need it. Uh, having more, just like more strong economy would be good. And we don't have a lot of options. Criminal got gutted when it came to Econ. They just don't have a lot to go by. Uh, I don't want to play the new resource, it's just way too slow. We don't have anything to do with the tags. Uh, special order, maybe as a one of is nice, just so we can get it. We could try two in the deck if we needed to, I guess. I like Leave No Trace a lot. This card's also way better with Lowe's, but it lets us face check into things. If we had ways to make no opus, if we had ways to face check into things, um and like incredibly safely, like on top of GPI net tap, that'd be dope. The birds, why? They aren't even good when you build the deck around it. You have a spare deck slots. Play Leave No Trace instead. The thing with birds is, okay, so if you don't, this deck needs to snowball off unresed ice, right? It, it needs to snowball off of unresed ice. Yeah, we have to play Falsified, you're right. Uh, and the thing with unresed ice is that if we don't draw our Rubicons early, Rubicon only works the turn that it's res. So if we have to pressure a remote server, we have to pressure central server, central server more accurately, we'll never be able to de-res the ice unless we run either like uh, a shutdown, which is an option, or, or emergency shutdown, or uh, brute force hack. The other option is just running these bird breakers, which are admittedly too expensive, but it does give us some flexibility. I like Fem. Fem is pretty good in the meta right now. Yeah, Fem's not bad. Play emergency shutdown instead of the birds, right? Well, the other options, if we're not spending influence, aren't that much better. Like, the, the option between Saker and then uh, Damara. Saker's actually better, I think. Yeah, a lot of times it is better, so I don't know. Magnemo. Faint. Faint is not bad, but for Faint, you'd want other things like Maxwell James and all that. Uh, Maxwell James seems like more D-Res stuff. We don't really need that, unless we play, like, Kiros McIntyre. Let's try one, see how bad this goes. Oh, man, I don't like this deck already. Ooh. What am I missing? I don't want to do the deuces just on the fact that we have enough card draw. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. We got to use our influence somehow. Uh, inside job faints are good with GPI. Are they? Oh, fuck. Yeah, they are. Whoa, inside job's really good with GPI. Dope. Thanks, Brandon. Easy Mark will cover your art at one point. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Easy Mark, huh? Just turn into a box of the deck, just do it. Dean Lister. Dean Lister is probably not terrible. It's also like a, a nice card to install. I still think we have, we just don't have enough money. Like so much of our, our rig depends on this. So we need something that gives us money. And I think honestly, something like Peace in Our Time might be it. And it's bad to give them money, but we're hoping that we have enough money that we can, they can slow them down. The other option, like it's suggested in chat, is Liberated Accounts. Liberated Accounts is not that terrible. We can fit two in the deck. This means that we're not doing the source. Liberated Accounts and Peace are... Yeah, maybe. Uh, this is basically 45 cards. We have one more influence. I guess we actually want Currents, just because we do get hosed pretty hard by uh, Scarcity. So I think we need three Currents. I think there's no other current that works as good as Corporate Grant. And then, actually, we could be doing Employee Strike, and I'd be more interested to do that. Let's see how the money works out. If we're doing uh, the other current playing the the one that we're talking about, it makes no sense uh, playing the one that robs them of money. 
One liberated seems bad too. I would consider peace. Peace gives you the money to install three of your things. Yeah, peace seems really good. And peace doesn't work with the other current. Peace works better with this. Let's try two peace and see how that goes. Because we don't want to play peace in the late game. Okay, this is a 47 card deck. Although encouraging a purge with Amakua is out. Yeah, Tapworm and Amakua don't make that much sense together. But we want to keep them down to zero credits. So I don't think we're just going to get enough room with Tapworm. And Tapworm's a lot of slots. Okay. This is our opening hand. It's bad. <laughs> This is our second opening hand. It's a lot better. It's honestly pretty good. So we would play a gamble. We cast. We could consider turtle and running. We could also draw once to play the strike. From that point, we have uh, some money. And we could play the Zomba flat out. It's honestly not terrible. But this stuff is actually really expensive. Like we're talking about, like, we're holding here 10 credits worth of installables. 10 credits worth of installables. And it's probably too much. That helps a lot. First, second... We can mod that shit out. Yeah, this is honestly okay. The Femme might just be too much money. I'm pretty sure the Femme is not right. So that gets a slot out, as cool as that is. So let's draw this. That looks like a good hand. Do we build a deck yet? Peace in a Rubicon deck is bad. Uh, VK, you're probably right to some extent. It helps if you're running the other guy. If you're running um, Kiros, not Kiros McIntyre, uh, Cortez himself. Um, that helps with the D-Res abilities, but like this only gives them four or five credits, and then they're more likely to pay with 419, I guess. So maybe it balances itself out. Also, maybe playing 419 and peace itself is busted. Again, I'm pretty sure that if we just drop falsified credentials and put this into lows, it'd be a better deck. Peace and 419 together seem a bit stupid. We need the money. I actually enjoyed peace in my Rubicon decks, though. Core time seems better than Kiros. The thing is that once we start D-Resing things. Uh, yeah, I don't know whether that's better or even just ha not having either. Cortez seems better than Kiros. It's yeah, it's a hard thing because at some point Kiros Kiros will always do something in the game while Cortez won't. The thing is, once we're set up, Kiros we probably don't need. Let's try this, but that's like the easiest swap we can make this deck. Also, maybe taking peace off, playing like other money cards would be good. If we had personal workshop, hmm. uh, four nine Rubicon switch. Deck name's been pretty good. We're yeah, we're also weak to like big damage, and we're also weak to other things. Like we're not running film critic. I guess we have employee strike, which helps something. Two people in YouTube chat. I have found. Decided to try my changes for Leland and CTM. Leland versus CTM is a fun matchup. Yo, man, dog, what's up? I wonder if eventually four one nine just becomes a good stuff ID. I hundred percent. I think this ability is fine. I think though, Mana Dog, there's just better good stuff IDs, and I'm mostly looking at Leela. I think Leela is probably the best good stuff at criminal ID, but this is not a bad one. The thing is, like, giving information isn't that good. Like, I don't know. I'm not convinced that being able to tell what each ice is has as much value as, like, bouncing with Leela, but I might be wrong. Yeah, the synergy just isn't entirely there. I like that dollar one nine actually. I'm gonna I'm gonna say I did that on purpose. If you're just tuning in, by the way, my name is Andre. Welcome to the Metropol Grid. We're streaming on Tuesday because there's no Thursday stream this week. Apologies, but it's important to break up your schedule. Uh, as a person, it's called busting your cycle, and it's it's good. It makes you a stronger person. So, welcome to that, I guess. Push your luck only belongs in the Fisk deck. <laughs> so I can make zany jokes about savvy investments. Actually, I think there's two savvy uh, runners. One, well, not investing. They they did print two savvy. hit the button again that's what our emote will be it's the muted emote yeah hey to talk you what's up best stream ever oh man fan of the show oh, cheers hey thanks you too ah shit i gotta change that button we're not gonna do it now mute switch nbn zero credits sounds actually a pretty good card 
Uh, I'm not building an immune emote. I can't celebrate that sort of ignorance. Uh, two, two of these cards are dead. This is all the good stuff we have. We got a mulligan that. We're going to high roll this. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now repeat everything you said. So this is actually pretty bad. Um, with Paulina. I, 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 what I said wasn't that important. Okay. This is a DNA tracker in HQ. Them telling us that did not gain us that much. So if we draw, we want to do it all at once. Face checking a DNA tracker is pretty bad for us. We don't want to do that. If we install this, we're giving them a credit every turn for sure. Seems bad. Seems pretty bad. Otherwise, we're going to be doing install that. Draw, draw. If we get our Zombo, we can actually mod it out at value, which is really good. Confess his true feelings. <laughs> Um, got a tape over that mute button. There's no point of having a button down. Yeah, we need that Zomba down stat so that we actually get value from this. I guess we're going to draw twice here. Damn, we're good. Damn, we're too good. So we'll get this down for free and then we'll get this down. So now if they're going to expose things, we actually gain a credit. And we still have four credits. We're going to start next turn with six and we have six MU. So maybe data folding. I don't know. So now they're going to pay credits for stuff. We don't know what this ice is. Got to be scared of that. Playing hedge fund. They're actually installing a card. So we're probably gonna get a credit on that. We did. Wait, what? Oh no, it's the opposite. Okay, so they lost a credit on that. that doesn't, largely doesn't matter. Okay, well now we need our Amaku and our GPI net tap. Let's go. Let's go. Halfway there, my friends. Going down to zero is pretty bad, but uh this would be something. Yeah, they paid, right? I forgot that we weren't going to get the money unconditionally. So now if we expose cards, which we can't do with Amakua, we get more money. So I think we have two falsified credentials. And they're just going to be basically losing a credit every two turns or so. And once the Breach Dome gets an archive, it's hard. So they lost another credit. So, so far we've been playing a card. They say lose two credits. Okay. All right. We got to keep drawing. That will play next turn. Hopefully we'll draw into something that we can do. Otherwise, we can throw this out. We can't play Drug Dealer, can we? Because we're still going to have to probably draw in our turn. So Drug Dealer is really bad. We can run Archives for a credit for a token. I don't want to do that now. One token is not that... That might make them more interested in, in icing up Archives. Once they ice up all servers, by the way, we're like in a really bad spot. Once they have an E-Strike up... Yeah, once we have an E-Strike up, we're in an okay spot. But until then... Clicking for credit there is also kind of bad because we're going to get four at the beginning of our next turn. So we didn't really need to like click into sure gamble range, but value. Oh shit, brain trust. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Well, we got to go to town. So basically we're going to play gamble. We're, we don't even play gamble. We're going to run archives four times so we can start contesting R&D. We don't know what any of this ice is, but once we get this down, we can like be really obnoxious. They might purge here, but it seems pretty bad. So we can start punishing things. We need six tokens to run HQ. This feels bad, right? Like, we're not getting enough value here. Maybe we also need Data Sucker. I felt like I was going to mute chat right there for fun. <laughs> this is for fun. So we could do Run and Run Archives, like oh, Rubicon. I think with Rubicon, we can now contest this. The thing is, we don't have the Rubicon installed. So what's the could this be? We know one DNA is here, and now it's five. So I think I think we gotta do this. If the DNA it hits, if it hits, it's fine. And we have one click to de-res this bad boy. We're not making money when they res it though. And this is really difficult. Like they can't. I don't think they can afford to res a, a what's it called on there. Uh, wow, I can't do that. Kakugo. It's a snare. All right, they hit our gamble, which sucks. All right, they're running traps as well. Wouldn't it be just taking down net oh, any other way. They spent four credits on that, which is pretty good. We didn't get an Amakua counter though, though. Because we did trash it. We could have decided not to trash it to get an Amakua counter. I think that's actually correct. All right, there are 15 credits. So now we can actually face check HQ. We want to make sure we have enough cards to not die to snare. Huh. I still think that's probably not good enough. Mongoose is relatively good. I'm going to run Archives here. They might purge. 
yeah, maybe that's not worth it. But now we can run HQ. And the thing is, like, de-resing that's pretty bad for us, too. Yeah, I feel like if we don't draw into our, all our GPI net tabs, this deck does nothing. Yeah, running Archives the last time there was probably wrong. So we want to run Archives at least three times to be able to contest next turn. I don't think we know what any of these ice are besides the central one, which we know is a DNA director. So we can draw once. Drawing is actually pretty bad. Ooh. So they threw out a genotyping. I didn't even realize they threw out a card. That's something you should play around. Um, considering they chose that turn to purge, it might be more likely that they threw out a beach, breach dome. Yeah, okay, so now everything's iced up. They gotta pay a credit for that. Again, none of this shit matters because everything's canceling it out. Like, you really need something like a siphon here. Okay, something on HQ, what could that be? Hokusai Grid, Ben Musashi, um, Virtual Tour. Shash, well, yo, what's up, man? And Dirty Laundry for those archives runs. We could do that. The thing is, once we're set up, a lot of times we'll make runs that aren't successful on purpose because we don't want to go through two ice at once, so it's kind of hard. But Dirty Laundry is a fun card. Remote server. Okay, so we can't expose that. So we could just like slam down. We want our code gate breaker. Could get a code gate breaker. We have already committed to drawing, so let's continue drawing. And we'll just get some more money. They're trying to score in an honest remote, so having enough credits might matter at some point. While uh, being able to um, purge. Might not be that great. This could be a psychic field. We didn't run last turn, so we don't add a neural. They're actually preventing all this shit. Oh, shipment. Okay, great. So they're on game, technically on game point. Uh, we got to start face checking to shit. We got to make them spend a lot of money. Like we just got to take hits. I'll put this down and run R&D. I think technically we still have money to break a Nancy if we need to. I don't think any of these cards matter that much though. We can just face check a lot of this damage. Oh, fuck me. Shit. So luckily we can not de-res that because we're going to lose six. You know what else you find and pay your GPI net tab? We can't do that. So we died a snare here. Yeah, we've seen one already. It's Cortex Lock. I like that card. Um, so we can't de res it. We just don't have enough money. Mind you, this has done nothing so far, but we need to find our GPI net tabs. Peace on our time is okay. But again, yeah, if we're trying to keep their money down, I don't know. Oh man, this looks really bad. This does not look great. Yo, Light Spectre, how's it going? Thanks for dropping by. How are you doing? Welcome to a Tuesday stream. Maryland giving the shuffle so they didn't draw the Cortex Lock. They could have, but it's not as likely. I guess it's just as likely. I don't know. Um, yeah, we'll expose that. They're icing up archives. They prevented credit. They IP it up. So our ability, again, it robbed them, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven credits. I think they actually chose not to expose the brain trust that they're fast advancing just to not give us a credit. Because with this credit differential, they can do it. And the thing is, as soon as we have peace in our time, they can, like, shipment out their next card, which they don't have a, just probably two more three twos in the deck, so it's kind of rare. Okay, this is the beginning of something. So we can, we need two of these to be able to contest HQ. Don't have those yet. Haven't been on the stream in a while. Have you played a Friday chip in Kim type deck yet? We tried something like that last week, but did not work out. I'm struggling to get card draw on those decks. They just seem way too slow. And they're going for the purge. I only suggest it because people in my meta like in these builds. It's less of a meme. I don't think it's a meme. It's just like we have all this other stuff that's that's doing it. Like that's the kind of card I'd love to play if we're playing Security Nexus Femme Patel, like more expensive stuff. But like paying five influence to install one of these for free seems kind of bad when we have just modded. Normally this deck should be playing drug dealer, but like we don't even have the economy to sustain it, considering all our economy hinges on like GPI net tab which we just can't do anymore. Like we can't face check into any of this stuff. I guess we could into this. Well, we already drew this turn. Oh, that's that's actually really good. That sets up our engine. We can now have an engine. All right, so it's what? Turn 11, we've set up our engine. And our engine's not even that great. We are gonna hit Amaku with two counters though whenever we run a face down ice, which is kind of cool. So we can start running archives. That being said, they have 22 credits, so I don't know. This inside job is probably the best thing. If we inside job archives, which seems like a really bad play 9 out of 10 times, it's actually maybe gets us 5 counters. The thing is they can just purge after that. I just tweaked the card counts on your Wari deck and added a little more econ. Think well. Beat a pretty standard score handedly. No way! Glad to hear it. 
Oh, did you try it in silhouette though? I'll abort the engine. All right, they spent another credit, so they're down like six or seven credits. Considering we gave them five, let's say we're even. Ah, it's okay, so it's still in 419. Drawing two more, we have the strike. Too little, too late, mind you. If we drew this turn one, it would have done a lot of work. There's a card on the remote server. Our hand's pretty bad. We could falsify it, I guess. That gives us an Emakua counter, which is pretty sweet. So let's just say agenda. It's an NGO front. Fuck it, we don't run. It's a Cortex Lock. That's fine. So, that's pretty good. That's something that we can punish. Uh, we have a lot of unused MU. We don't want to fire that, so we're going to pay five for that. So, by punish, I mean it's bad for us. If we want to continue, um, yeah, we definitely want to continue. It gives us more money. If they res both of them, it's fine. It's a Kakugo. Go ahead. But, like, we did just get five counters in one turn. So, this one we don't need a break. This is fine. This is actually the more annoying one to derez, but we want the outer one to be derezzed. Okay, so now it's where the game starts. 419 cost them 7, but then you paste and drew on turn for 6. You can check out before they res. You can, but then you have to trash these, and I don't want to do that. Right? Like, you can jack out, but you have to trash these, which is pretty bad. Unless we're talking about inside job. Yo, what's up, Tony? How's it going? Yeah, we're streaming on Tuesday, because we're not going to be here for Thursday. So this seems like the next best day that starts with a T. Okay, so we can derez either of these. This costs us 4. What? You don't have to fire these? Oh, between those two. Oh, yeah, on the second piece of ice. That's such a big deal. Oh, we goofed that. That's a big deal. This deck gets a lot better because we can on the approach jack out on the second ice. On the first ice, you can't approach. Huge, 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 huge. Um, That sucks. <laughs> yeah, there's no reason to do that. So we can do res this for two. Seems right. I can derez that. Uh, these two cards are dead. We already drew this turn, right? So we can just draw once more. I got Peregrine. I have the whole whole cast of Falcons. All right. I think you just robbed them on HQ now. They can res this DNA tracker for eight, and also yeah, that. So like the money is not going to be a thing. We can crash them. Also, oh, let's fuck this shit. What is this shit? I don't know what this is. But now we can run HQ really easily. We break this for three credits. Genotyping, trashing two, shuffling. Snares are coming back. We're running HQ this turn. The only problem is like this is so expensive. Again, Los. This is actually pretty good. We'll career fry this down. You can res. So we know it's a G DNA tracker. We have the credits. The problem is we don't have credits to trash this and derez this, and it feels like we need a derez this. It's probably good. They're paying eight there, so we can pay three. If this is a Mumbai virtual tour, that'd be pretty bad, but we haven't seen enough assets to expect that. You can jack out after firing the net tap at step 2.2. Yeah, as long as it's not the innermost, it's pretty good. We'll hit the hand first. Shit. They didn't res this, actually. It's a Chrysium grid. No, we don't care about that. So what do we lose? Luckily, we did not lose our breaker, which is the best thing because we have no recursion. So that's two snares so far. Um, probably want to remove the tag. Let's go ahead and say removing the tag is a thing. We could derez this. It puts us down to zero, and then they trash this, so we can't derez it. They don't have a lot of credits anymore, though. So this ice remote is pretty. We're actually okay. We're in an okay spot. Only seventeen more hit points. Real crime with Peregrine is that Raptor is super fast bird and that Breaker is anything but fast. Uh, yeah, anything associated with Temujin besides the contract is pretty bad. Derez it. That puts us down to zero credits and then they trash a turning wheel. I don't know. Do we have another turning wheel? I think so, but we can't draw through our deck to get it. We need to draw as little as possible from now on. We're just going to keep doing this shit. Back we go. Oh, go ahead. If they trash the turning wheel, you win? That actually might be true. It's 
So we need to make a successful run. So it seems very bad. We could go through that for one damage to expose this. Our damage matters a lot. We need to know what that is. We have one more falsified credentials. Derezzing this for four is pretty good too. It's basically like derezzing it for free. <laughs> Some really broken logic I convinced myself. Uh, Cause every time we hit it, we gain two, right? We can't run to that again. Haven't drawn yet. That puts them on 10. Uh, they could, in theory, do advanced double shipment from 10 and win because we didn't make a successful run. Strike feels really bad when they're at four points. We've already drawn this turn. The next mod, it has very few targets. It's a Maryland fantastic. They just go out, go ahead and do, do the purge. Mm, that's fine. Yeah, we really goofed this remote because that was such an easy economy. Like that, we run there, get... A lot of tokens. Yikes. Okay, we're planning to strike this turn. Oh, man. Dead. Dead. It's not, not good. Oh, man. These are not... These are not fun decks. What's fun right now? Like, compete... Comp repeatedly derezzing their stuff i'm not into it uh oh they're gonna fast advance another thing out this seems like a bad card they pay another credit shipment from 10 do a double oh no single okay so now we're on game point clear the current they have eight credits left we can make money running this remote getting the kagogo res who built this deck is not terrible i think we we do that let's go res it if you'd like if you'd wish to res it do res it we are breaking this one. If we break this one, we get two more credits. We also get four more counters. And they probably can't res that one, so we can get five counters. Let's assume they can't res the next one. We also get to find out what it is. Hit me. Let's play the tap stack. It seems way more fun. Yeah, it probably is. Earth rides, fantastic. Didn't need that. So we're going to expose this. It's a data loop. Fantastic. And we're going to access this and not trash it, which puts us at five. So now we can start hammering central servers. Pay three to trash Maryland. No. So we can de-res that for four, which means we can do this not again. We actually probably should have trashed that. Hold on. If we trash that, they go down to... Can you trash that? Could you kind of trash that? Yeah, we need to get rid of their money. I'm really not sure. Those D-Res decks are boring to play. You can only run when your rig is assembled. Yeah, you can shovel it. I'm messing around with smoke with equivocation, find the truth in top hat. It's like a maker's eye every other turn. It seems good. So, we can spend all our money on this. This is like, this one's, one strength is pretty easy to contest. So, like, I think we can just farm this and make them spend all their money on it. Yeah, I think we have to do something. We can't play with perfect. Like, we just have to do this. They can res the, that one, that's fine. And now we can just gain like Magnum Opus. If they res that, we can also yeah farm this one. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, double the deer double res there was bad, but at least they maybe spend four credits. Maybe that's good. If they res deer, could you go and run the remote? I just don't I can't red, let this fire. Run archives. Yeah, we just gotta keep doing this. All right, it's like a magnum opus. We just can't do it fourth click because then it can res it. Drawing gives them a credit, which is bad. We could run R and D for three credits. 
got to convert our axes to something. Yeah, I don't see how we win if we don't do this. Jacobus, what's up? Super Secret Tuesday stream. That's about right. We died in neural. We died in neural today, huh? We're dying in neural. Well, uh, yeah, we're not on the stream it on Thursday this week. Oh, we're dying in neural. We're not dying in neural. Oh, we're so good. Uh, it's pretty good. Not dying in neural, huh? Drawn gives him money. Let me get res it. I'm probably real res it. All right. We break this for one now. I don't know if this is worth it. Wait, so we spend two clicks and one credit, and they spend two credits. Yeah, it seems pretty bad. We also can't draw. They gotta be flooded. I don't know. It's so secret, so that's even mutes. Yeah, eh? If we draw, we give them money, which is pretty bad. They need seven for this, but we need a draw to be able to contest this remote server. We also wanna make a successful run. I think we have to draw. That's a good draw. That's a good draw too. Do you play sacred because that's how you win this? Yeah, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Building turning wheel counters seems of the utmost importance. We have enough just to run here. Like we can do draw, draw, gamble, run eight, R eight, R and D. We gotta make sure we run. That being said, there's still one shipment from the deck. One probably three two left. Even three ones that can pass advance. Strike is good. Too late now. Can't play that. <laughs> and here they can trash with snare, but not that valuable. They can trash our one counter turning wheel. It's hard to build turning wheel counters. Fuck me! God damn it! Shit! Can you install an ice? Can I trash ice on another remote? No, it has to be the same remote. If we just didn't play that gamble, huh? Well, it's an HQ. We got a turning wheel counter. We'd be on game point. Which is good. Apparently, Dan did a world's last year. My opponent's saying you can't. Mm, pretty confident you can't do that. Even if they're unique, you can't. You'd have to res it. Uh, Jarvis. All right, they did. A, they did. A, they did a purge. They did, they did the purge there. So, uh, how do we win? So there's one five three in hand. They did this card to card. It might be actually an archives. It doesn't look like we're ever gonna check archives. Um. So hard to win. So hard to win. Like we still only get two agendas and they're, they're on three obocatas, six, so that's nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there's like 17. I think there's another three pointer, another two pointer and, and two more obocatas. So like an SSO, a philotic, and then two more obus. Can we contest this remote? No, far from it. We have to do this. Oh, thank God, drug dealer. So if we play this, it gains us more money in the long run. I think we have to do that. That being said, okay, so we spend, no. Man, do we have another inside job? Thankfully we do. That being said, inside job sucks because our cuckoo goes rest. What is the card that is removed from the game? Genotyping, it's a recursion card. They trash two from R&D, shuffle four back, not terminal. Very cool. So we're not making a successful run this turn. That's pretty bad. We might as well play peace. Yeah, we don't actually have any way to capitalize on the money, so maybe that's wrong. We can face tank through the DNA trackers though. Like we always face tank DNA trackers, access two cards, a turning wheel, steal five points, win. Yikes. Man, it's really hard to figure out why to play a criminal right now, besides playing Geist, which is very good. And Leela with Gang Sign, which is really good. But all these other ones, like, we're fighting so hard for win conditions. Like, we have to get honest axes, and this is our best breaker, and we don't have the economy to back up our axes. Like, there's so many reasons why it doesn't seem great. Tell me what I'm missing. So we have access to no actual real breakers. We lost our Peregrine. Oh, excuse me, we have a Saker still in the deck. So there is some reason to playing this. The thing is, as soon as they jam the Obakata, we have to get through this thing. 
criminal being honest. <laughs> we had to get through this thing, which is really hard. Uh, it would be more possible if we had our... Because uh, this puts two cards on top of our deck. We have no burst draw. Uh, if we had Maxwell James, which this deck doesn't, it would be a bit easier. Data Luke Kikuko Oboe is seven cards. Better snipe in HQ. Yeah, right? Criminals shouldn't need to rely on honesty. That's actually a problem I had with criminals. Like For the last year or so, all the criminal cards that we printed looked like this. Like blue console. Blue computer. Blue computer. Blue helmet. And this stuff. Where, like, the old cards used to have, like, guns and, like, robberies and bombs and shit in them. Where they used to be criminal. Now everything is just, like, it looks like just Shaper where you tinted the colors. That that always upset me a bit. Yeah, Saker is pretty good against Kakugo. It can de it and then it basically puts two cards back in hand. Problem is, as soon as we draw, we have to throw things out. Wind on Centrals is probably right, but we have to Hail Mary this one. And that's going to be difficult. I think we're going to take all the money. Mm, nope, that's no different than breaking this. This sucks. I think we have to take three no damage run centrals. Jams up next turn you lose. That remote is too busted. Yeah, it's pretty good. Lowest plus EC, I'm telling you. What's EC? Oh, Merchant Creativity? I think we just got run through this. Oh, we can't run this turn, never mind. Uh, so, do we just throw something out? It seems bad. This will not pay off anywhere near soon enough. Drug dealer seems bad, but it is clickless card draw. And they're going to win relatively soon. Yeah, fuck it. We'll play we'll play drug dealer with two cards left. Gabe stuffing a rolled up carpet in a hover van. But that's what it should be. Like, like the criminal cards aren't very criminal. They're not. They've just been like blue consoles recently. That kind of sucks. Inside job HQ and spend the turning wheel. It's actually pretty good. I think we have to do that. I think we're going to inside job HQ. Probably get another turning wheel counter. And then we can do run R&D. Yeah, right, we're fine. Dealer's terrible? No, because the game's over in one turn. Dealer's not bad. Because it lets us start a turn with six cards, which is way more valuable in this situation. Because like it's over in a turn. This is the Obakata. So it's either do they have another agenda in HQ? If they had a five three, they a three two, they probably wouldn't jam it, right? So we can get two accesses on central servers, two. So actually three. We can inst no because if we spend it, that's a card. So we can do draw, inside job, run, and then run for four. Yeah, that's the best. Draw. Yeah, draw inside job, draw inside job. Run, run for four. Yeah, okay. Sacred last card. Oh, that was gonna work out well. So we still got two runs in us. Okay. Okay. Fire. Whoo. Find me a snare, my friend. We'll find it. Biotic. Ooh. Run R&D. Hit me. Run archives break with mongoose to get counters. Uh, we can't contest this remote. It doesn't matter. It's just, we know what this is, a data loop, but we just don't have enough cards to get through all this shit. Counters, I don't think I have the issue right now. Let's win. Mirage Okay, that's going to slow us down. Oh, it's no good. Got it! Good game. Seeing that, uh, that actually made it really unlikely. Like, seeing on the top of their deck, uh, or seeing in their HQ that they had the shipment means that they didn't have the other 3-2 in hand. Yeah, that's brutal. And a lot of this is that they're running Ice that actually has a bad face check. You know? Like, if they actually ran ice that was, like, just Kagugo's over again, you can smash into them. They also were smart by putting their, like, spiky ice on central servers. The ones that we know farm turning wheel counters. Like, as soon as someone puts a Kagu on the outside on central servers, you just farm the shit out of that. You just farm it. So, that's pretty bad. It's three cards. You have seven. So, this is four. This is five. This is six, seven. I don't think we can do it. Oh, hey, my pleasure. Thanks for watching. I appreciate the kind words. So that's no good.
Oh man, we gotta play something good now, otherwise... I don't know, I'm gonna leave this stream with like a bad taste in my mouth. I'm not gonna stream for another week. It's gonna just like build up. See you around, eh? Okay. So that's fun, huh? Father Wendy, yo, what up? Good game! How's it going? Uh, we gotta do something good. What have I been playing? I've been playing an Asa deck. The security of the licensing came from Sneak Door Melbourne. I've been playing this a bit on the internet. It's been pretty fun. I think this card in my mo want to revisit another list. It's Biovault. Let's play TBB's Asmari. I I'd actually rather play this one that was gave to me given to me in chat. Who passed this to me? This one looks more fun. Uh, Big Boys Asmari is like there's one card in Big Boys Asmari list that I'd be very interested to play. This will probably be the deck list of the next week, so it's gonna happen anyways. That's what happens with Big Boys decks. Uh, I, I want to try out at Mani Sanai. It looks pretty fun. I'm for Sunny their eyes. Um, Sunny fell pretty hard today, but like. It's pretty standard glacier with ash, which is pretty cool. This one looks a bit more interesting. It says Mario, which is fun. Uh, our ice is varied, and new sound is pretty good. I'd be force connection. That's super weird. Let's try this one out, huh? I don't know what we do with daily business shows, whether or not we protect them, but I think we put them in remote. So let's try this one. This one seems fun. Just tuning in, my name is Andre. How's it going? If you're new around these parts, say hi, it's cool. Also, if you're just lurking in chat and, or in the video chat, a lot of people do that. That's fine, how's it going too? Um, figured it out. It's 11 o'clock, I think we can do this for maybe another 20 minutes. That generally means two SSO games, am I right? Let's try this out though. Okay, I honestly don't know how that happened. Like, I did not touch the button. I didn't touch it. Is NumPad Zero, like, hooked up to some other thing? I didn't touch it. I li it just doesn't get old. Yeah, I don't think I touched it. Like, look. That muted it. I know that. Hey, hey, your roommate's behind the door with a wireless keyboard. Actually, yeah, I have a wireless keyboard. They both work. It's kind of funny. I don't think I touched that. I honestly don't. That's fine. A smoke. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, yeah, there's three biased reporting in this deck. That I think Umbridge with. I got to actually look at this deck list real quick. All right, so we got Explode Palooza, Foods, SSL Endorsement. We, as a win condition, have hard. We don't have Sea Source. That really sucks. Uh, but we have hard hitting news and an exchange. Sea Source Exchange, I think, is where it's at nowadays. Now, economic hard hitting is actually pretty great. We also have a single boom, which we can consult for. And consulting is also a really good reason why this deck should have Sea Source, because you do consulting Sea Source and exchange. Like Sea Source, consulting is so much better with Sea Source. Double preemptive, not a fan of that. This deck looks like it should be a bit not needing that. Three scarcity is also the best. Best of luck. Have fun. So best opening hand is scarcity. We have an ice for the remote server. We also have this, but like uh, three of these cards are dead. We can definitely mulligan into it. Three bias seems odd. Yeah, two's probably good enough. Is it the same as insert with numlock off? I don't think so. I gotta mulligan that. Yeah, it's good enough. That's weird. So indexing is a big threat from smoke. So we want to uh, put something on R&D for sure. Now uh, this probably we don't want to play right away our turn is these two which means we can definitely draw once drawing an agenda would suck oh, that's actually a really good draw uh so we can put that r&d and just hedge fund up once we have the credits uh what do we want to call here it's probably resource or event um i'm more likely that there's more events going on i think you almost what do you call against smoke it's like what kind of events are there resources she's definitely playing netmarker um maybe ghost runner Event, yeah, no event is, let's try an event here. If we want to play biased reporting, we probably shouldn't let the resources fire. RG key coming out. Oh, that's cool. 
I'm never call program turn one. So they got to pick a number here. Generally, zero is the thing. So they get the global food, which turns that on right away. Uh, we are good to hard hitting news. They also hit Rashida, which is going to trash. Uh, so it looks like, I hope they hit this. Oh, they didn't hit that. Well, they know it's going to happen right now. That seems like not a good thing to be doing against CTM. Uh, well, this is pretty bad ice for HQ. Move your face. Oh, thanks. Two monitors. Uh, we can probably put this on HQ. It's not going to be that good anywhere else. We can credit up. And this is like a really easy hard hitting news. I think we have to boost by one, which is sweet. And now they look like they both iced. Now, this doesn't matter, but it makes the chance of them hitting the force connection a bit better, which is just going to be two more tags. It makes them less likely that they'll clear tags. Uh, here, I think we just call event over and over again, considering that resources are pretty bad to play when you're tagged. While things like Sure Gamble seem a bit nicer. Yeah, they can play Gamble right here, right? No, not even. Throwing out a paperclip, they have a way in. That's really scary. Bias reporting also pretty bad if they're hard hitting news. Not a big fan of this. CVS, that's a good tech card. <laughs> no, no, that's not gonna do it. We gotta keep drawing. Yeah, again, like I think we called it at the beginning. There's a lot of these cards here that I don't care about. Two preemptives, three biased, seems like too much. Is this card even that much better than Bernice Mai? To some extent. I'm not raising that. So they pick a number here. Generally, a lot of people pick zero. They're picking zero, so they hit the biased reporting. That's not going to fire. So it's just a single axis. So far, we've made no money off our ability. We've made two credits. We also don't have a closed account, I don't think. Wait, maybe when I'm out tabbing, I'm hitting it. Okay, so 11 credits. Scarcity coming down is okay. Uh, we can't protect R&D, so it's not that great. And there's a lot of agendas in there. They probably still going to start looking because you have to panic and do something at this point. Again, <laughs> too preemptive, not something I'm really excited about. This is probably fine in a new remote. We can just play that. They'll definitely want to check that. We'll call an event again. Calling program is also not terrible, but with 11 credits, they actually might clear all the tags here. That's why putting something on the table might be good. Smoke does play misdirection, so it might be rough to kill them. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, there you go. Clearing all the tags. They didn't run that. Okay, I slowed them down a wee bit. I think they spent more money and time than we did, so let's call that a success. And again, like, uh, a lot of big ice. Not a lot of stuff to push our forward momentum. Like, none of these are good forward momentum cards. They're all, like, recovery cards. Uh, we could just go ahead and play this to put those three back in. I don't know what else we're doing. Clicking for a credit, which is actually pretty valuable considering we just put an I eight strength ice here. Even just drawing again would probably be nice. I'm going to throw out a bias. There's no way it's going to be good before we lose. Or win. Or win. Um, Icing on Barkai's is only good later in the game. I'll just take another credit. Yeah, bias is so far away. With this on the table, it's so far away from being good. Smoke also didn't pull out their misdirection, but a lot of smokes do play misdirection. It's a pretty easy tech card. You can pull out a self-modifying code, and it's a difference sometimes between tag store. Mind you, tag decks aren't that popular anymore, so some people might have just cut their copy. All right, they're going for the check here. That's actually really good, and we're not going to res that. All right, so we spend one credit here. They have two tags. <laughs> And they can trash it though, but they have two tags. Well, we can't recur this card, so maybe we need to use better. Icing up archives is mad. Yeah, Data Raven isn't spiky, but it stops them from doing like net recur, gain credit, or like Desperado net recur runs on archives. But that's we're so far away from that being a thing. They need a breaker and their net recur. I hope they just give up on the tags now. Even like if that, if we could res the toll booth, putting it down to zero is not terrible. They're doing it. I think clearing one tag there is probably okay. Yeah, I don't know if we close the count them on three. Film credit coming out. That's actually a pretty good card against our deck specifically. Again, I don't know if any of this stuff is going to matter. We just need a bit more money. Because they're probably going to clear the tag, so the server is fine next turn. This is data. Like, we can't res any of this stuff. And we have all this late game ice or late game operations that aren't that great. Also, the fact that we put them to no money means as Mari, we're not getting value. 
Anyways, back in they go. I wish we could call a tag. That'd be fun. Call a basic action. Remove. Tag. Gain credit. Draw a card. Well, there's no point resing this. We want to res this once they do the indexing. But for a single axis right now, it's acceptable. If they index, you res it. They can break it, sure, but they don't know what it is now. Oh, man, they fucking hit our boom, which we can't recur. I forgot that we had boom. <laughs> that sucks. So we have to now preemptive that. I guess that's why there's two preemptives in the deck. So what do we want to do? We can ice a Raven on here. Not an ice that we can really afford to res. They're probably just going to be slamming centrals over and over again. I, do we draw? That doesn't matter. Like, these are pretty anti-synergistic, right? Like, a card that makes them lose money and a card that gets... Only if they have board state. Oh, I did not mean to put that there, but that's probably fine. Data Raven told booth is a standard taxing remote, even for smoke. 100%. And I meant to put this on a remote server. I think we have another uh, Raven. I want a news hound. Oh, the dirty laundering. So they gain three, I gain two. We gain two. Excuse me. That's fine. Purge. Yeah. They also found out what we threw out. There's two face down cards there. It's definitely a really good remote. They threw out a Maker's Eye, which is pretty wild. Oh, that's. Do we? I think we just play that for value. Like, we don't need a hard hitting news them. I think if they're playing that like a desperate dirty laundry, that's probably good enough. It also clears cards out of our hand, which seems important. It's probably a frustrating card to play against. Down to one credit because he dirty laundry. Like, imagine that. They dirty laundry to give us two and then they lose four for it. That's brutal. A lot of times people play that, play that card. Yeah, we'll hit him. That sucks that we do that now. Maybe actually we shouldn't have done that because they're probably going to hit the toll booth anyways. Um, but, uh, yeah, maybe that was wrong. I will recover from that relatively well. We're basically only paying five for that. Three card draw might be too much. Refractor's coming down. Okay, that's the card we wanted. Okay, now we got to shove a lot of stuff in a lot of places all at once. So this is really good on the remote server on uh, server one. This is good in a new remote. They can't really contest that. And we can bias reporting for two credits. I think they'll have more programs before anything else. They might be playing cloak, let alone if they get a paperclip out. So we'll hold on to that. That might actually give us a hedge fund full of value. This somewhere is pretty nice. Uh, bouncing a networker is, is actually pretty gross. The server is probably good enough. Uh, I don't know, HQ pressure, not gonna be that big of a deal with this thing on the table. If they don't contest it, they can't contest it. I don't want to res this. I'll put this on HQ. I don't want to res the Raven. I'd rather res this. We could actually consider trashing the Raven. I don't like that one on HQ that much. Because if they're running HQ for a lot, like, I don't know. Generally, the game is between the remote and R&D. If they're running HQ, they might just go and tag me, and then that one doesn't matter that much. All right. We got, I think, six credits this game so far. Drop the food in the remote. Yeah, you're right. We probably could have just done that. That's probably a lot better. Find the truth coming down. Self-modifying code coming down. So now they want to run once a turn to see the top of R&D. So it's good that we got a Raven on that. It's actually one of our more taxing pieces of ice. We res this. We control our draw. We do spend two, but the chance of us drawing that is a bit better. Uh, I think we just jammed this. It's a bit expensive right now. We need to make sure that we have the money to res this. I'm going to say event still here. Well, they're probably likely to, to install programs they need to get through this, like the, the paperclip. They also can't get tagged or they lose Find the Truth. All right. <laughs> Man, this card is now... Yeah, we actually could take a turn and just play these. Hardening News seems so much better, though. Did, will they trash the RNG key? Maybe. We actually could wait on this, too. We don't need to do that right now. Yeah, maybe that's wrong. But like this only got value on turn 11. And a lot of times you just need econ cards early because you want to rush. Because, yeah, they probably trash that. So we trash that. They definitely have another. It's not an influence card. I'll do advanced credit. So next turn we can do advanced, advanced, jam this. And I still think calling event is probably fine. 
Uh, they probably need at least one stealth credit to get through this, let alone three for that. So I'm feeling pretty good. Unless they play Sure Gamble, this remote seems pretty good. So events just to stop like the Sure Gamble. And by stop, I just mean disincentivize. Oh, ooh, I didn't realize that came there. Oh, oops. Here's hoping they can't break this. That's why, uh, oh, that's actually really good. That's why Raven, uh, Toll Booth is really good against Shaper or anybody runs this because if you put them both on the same server, it's really good. Luckily, they played their own current and they have a tag and they definitely want to clear that because both of these are like high priority trashes. We'll trash both of them if we can. Oh, we can see what they draw. Exactly. Sorry, I got to read this better because we, we knew they had this because we can read the chat because when this is installed, they have to expose everything they draw. And by I don't mean expose, I mean reveal, which is definitely a different word. Uh, I actually like the scarcity pretty good. The thing is, this is going to turn off the current, but it doesn't really matter that much. And I don't love the mass draw when we can't control it well. And this is not that good when they're at zero credits. We could consider hardening and use them. That was actually probably better than scoring that. They did make a run. They could hard hit and use them. It puts us down to one credit. So I think scoring this was 100% wrong. We should have just hard hit and use them and then installed this. Again, I'm, I'm just not playing well, huh? This is so good. The problem is that they have maker's eyes in their hands. They can't really play them. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. And then we have to basically like preemptive our boom into the deck. They can also pull out their, uh, like they could pull out their misdirection. So we could consider calling program on this thing. I'd rather call event just because I'm assuming there's an indexing coming out. We can't defend an indexing. Oh, RNG key. That's an easy way for them to recover. Not actually that easy. If they get an agenda though, we can exchange a three pointer for whatever one pointer they get. Oh, find the truth in RNG key. That's super dope, of course. Mind you, this combo is not going to last for that much longer. 50 minutes. Pretty bad steal. That being said, it did give them credits. Install Rashida, but don't pop. I'm going to jam Rashida for sure in this remote server after preemptiving and having enough credits to res the wrap around. I think also we trash find the truth. I think we do credit trash this Rashida. It should keep going, right? Keep going. Get your accesses. Oh, we're going to HQ. So they could trash the Rashida. That's the best case. Consulting. That's a scary card. That 100% means boom. And it's not like they don't know boom. They've seen the boom. People don't expect economic warfare in yellow. That's probably worth exploring. It's a dirty card. No yogurt for anyone. All right, they have a net marker, which is pretty far away from being valuable. So, don't want that. Whoa, if they ran R&D again, were they won? I don't know what the order of the card draw is. I think it's in the opposite order. So we'll put this in server one. Gaining credit, we gotta trash something. We gotta trash this one. That means they have to guess. The other option was clicking for two, which actually would be probably better. Because, oh, fucking hell, I'm not even thinking when I'm playing. If we click for two, we can res the wrap around. And then we can res the wrap around, which is much better than any of that crap. Like, we lose to Maker's Eye here. We lose to so much. That's so bad. There's five shops on that one block. Oh, yeah, they're owned by Wayland, right? Oh, my God. What are we doing? I gotta like just sit back a bit and like focus on all this stats. I'm getting like one thing and I'm like, okay, I gotta focus on talking about it. Luckily they didn't, they didn't. So they're gonna clear all the tags this turn. If we fire Rashida, we draw a lot. We need six credits to consult boom, but we also have to shuffle it back. That's pretty good. I don't want another Rashida anytime soon. Okay, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna trash that. We wanna get money. They're going to clear your tags. We could also consider playing the current. So we want the current for sure. Okay, we get the money. They're going to clear all their tags, and this seems like very important to get rid of. Now we're going to throw out some cards here. Not that big of an issue. We can play the current because we know they have the net recur in hand, and that makes things a bit, like, brutal. Uh, we don't need the DBS. 
New, we don't know their Sentry Breaker is, but New Sound has a bunch of value. Once we shuffle our Boom in too, like they need to clear their tags or they lose. Hopefully we get a Beal or something else in here. I don't even think his deck runs Beal for some reason. But yeah, it's SSL. It's more glacier but we don't have defensive assets or upgrades, which is strange. I like this card a lot. Exchange is not that good. Like Exchange is actually pretty bad in this deck considering we only have one one-pointer. So I don't even see why we have Exchange. This doesn't make that much sense. It's very unlikely that will actually work out for us. Hard times in non-stream life this week. If you want to talk about Chad's always here. Now things have been going pretty okay. I think they're going to clear all the tags. SMC coming down. That's probably for the yeah misdirection. So they can clear all the tags for four credits. That makes the next hard hitting news actually pretty bad. We could have called program there if we expected that play, which honestly wasn't that far from being callable. But they don't have a lot of money. And they're actually going to go ahead and trash that, which is incredible. Now these are both terminal, which also sucks. Because ideally, we just wanted the boom in the deck. We also could consider shuffling this. Oh, they're not on game point. It doesn't matter. We could do install advance advance. That's a good card to install advance advance. Because we also could hit them with the hard hitting news. And then they have to do credit, 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 credit. Remove the misdirection. Like, if they don't have four credits, this will stick for one turn. The thing is, we have no punishment for that. We have no closed accounts, nothing. So, in the server, it goes. Yeah, this is very much what a scoring window looks like. I agree with you, Maui. So, event. They need a program for this, but, like, even with no money, they can't play programs. So, we're just going to call event all the time. They can't play their resources. I haven't been checking what they've been drawing. I have to pay attention if they have been drawing. I don't think they did. So, they just drew. Oh, no. We trashed their shit. Never mind. But I feel like we removed a lot of their... E there are only 12 cards left in R&D? Oh, it's a 40-card deck, right. Oh, shit. We gotta go fast here. We drew, like, nine cards. Admin coming out. Okay, that's a really good score. Because that's gonna actually cover the costs. We can't res anything on R&D, so we do lose to a lot of, like, very simple stuff. There's no punishment for hard-hit news. Because they always do three credits. Oh, no, they can't. No. We just need to win off the remote. Yeah, we lose to indexing here. If we were worried about it, yeah, this is really bad. Uh, we could shuffle this back in, but we just wanted to score that. Yikes! They hit an economic warfare off the top, guessing two. So that's pretty good that we know we're drawing that. That makes a window. The thing is, like, there's. It's really hard to play Economic Warfare and score a 5-3. They just don't work well together. Things like Beal are really easy because you can do Economic Warfare Jam Beal. And we don't have that luxury here. Also, clicking up to 4 credits might be wrong. They might just want to install something so they don't lose all their, their shit. Oh, okay. So they are getting Economic Warfare. That's the problem, though, is like we don't have a good counter. Like, we install Advance Advance. Can they get to this remote? This costs them 3 stealth this so they basically just need a way to get through that i also kind of want to shuffle this because if we do install advance advance we're down on two credits and then we have to res the wrap around yeah we'll take our chances right like if that was a four two or a three two and sure we're not running a lot of agendas which is pretty good uh we don't actually need money But yeah, I would love to be able to play Warfare and Jam and Agenda in the same turn. Can't do that. It's unfortunate. So we can spend all our money. We're not protecting anything on HQ. If they want to get through this, it's all their money, which means that they just basically win off of two singles. They could. It's possible. There you go. That was the reason why we could consider calling Program. But again, the money doesn't matter. We have enough off of SSL. So there's just a chance we lose here. Oh, Exploded Palooza. Yeah, we probably lose. SSL endorsement is really good. Oh, fuck. That even turned the current off. Oh, luckily this costs three. Wait. Oh, I think we just lose. Because that hit turns the current off. I forgot that we relied on the current so much. 
Because they run through. This is... What? Whoa, wait, why didn't they win? Do they think it's an NGO front? Okay, hold on. Because they had four credits. This does nothing. This is one stealth boost. And then three off the Ghost Runner. They were short one credit? They had four credits. They were short one credit. They were short one click. Because this is five. Oh shit, Grim, what's up? Yeah, with the ID credit and this, they were one click short. Yikes. Oh, rough. Yeah, so they didn't have a lot of money. We just put an agenda behind two pieces of ice. Sometimes that works. Scarce it, yeah, it's a good one. Oh man. Oh man. Yeah, currents, huh? Hard fought game. Just take the win. Yeah. I don't think we played that well. Not a lot of agendas in the deck. That's like what's good about running the three pointers, but like it doesn't work well with any of the other stuff we're running. This also would have been so good against their deck. Like they couldn't pay six for a single piece of ice. And that's the thing, is like with all and that's like one of the big reasons why people like uh or people are impressed with the ULN. I agree with this. Hey, thanks you too. Um, is that like the, you can write tech for this like with an admin or that's probably not the best example but like with a femme fatale or uh, a refractor with the hunting grounds people are breaking toll booth for like one two credits and at the end of the day less it's like one of the three specific cards and they could be running divey which is one of the specific cards but like besides divey and morningstar and sherman which aren't very po popular and common while all the other stuff we talked about for toll booth are uh that's a six credit cost that's a six six credit tax. That's not bad. I think you could have played five SSO games in that time. <laughs> I think we could have played two. That game actually wasn't that long. It was only a 24 minute game. Whew. Anyways, on that note. Oh, I was meant to do this before. Oh, shit. I was meant to do this before and I forgot. This is meant to be a midstream thing. I want to do a segment in the stream where we talk a bit about Netrunner news. And it's a pretty bad time to put it at the end because viewership isn't that great. And if you watch the YouTube video, I don't know if you get this far. But we'll do it real quick. Okay, housekeeping. Firstly, how's everyone doing? Is everyone doing all right? Great. Um, really good news. Uh, our friend of the channel, Patrick, you've seen on the channel before many times, and he's been showing up on the stream for the last couple of whiles. He has agreed to become a regular part of this channel, so it's going to be first Thursday of every month Pat will be here. So rejoice. I'm really excited to have him on, um, and we're going to be having him on re relatively regularly, which is a really cool thing to hear. I'm just going to hang out with Pat, which is cool. Um other thing real quick if you haven't seen it this is totally worth seeing there's a show called uh, billions which is on showtime and uh we've heard about this for it was like a year ago that dan dergenio the two-time world championship uh person uh winner was contacted by the showrunners of the show and they'd be like hey can you help us do a consulting on netrunner for a television show we're running for a big studio and he said yes and a bunch of people got involved and the show is billions which is a showtime show i'm not very familiar with it but the episode that involved Netrunner came out this week. Uh, here, you can watch it. Ben Terrell uploaded on Vimeo. It's There's like two scenes. It's like a minute 30 of Netrunner. But it's two characters. One of the characters, by the way, you might be familiar with outside of the show. This is guest star Mike Birbiglia, who is like just a, a stand-up comedy and storyteller that is pretty well known. And this actress, her name is Aja Taylor... Or their name, sorry, is Aja Taylor... Dylan, I think? And they were on... Uh, you might know them from Orange is the New Black... Um, anyways, check this stuff out. I'm not going to show it, let alone with audio, because I don't know what I can show Showtime on a stream without getting in trouble. But um, check it. It's really cool. And they're, the things, it's very accurate to Netrunner. It's like very high tense. And it's like, it's hilarious. There's like a guest list and red wine being served. Cool thing also, shout out there in that corner right there. That's actually Dan Dargeni himself. Uh, that's Jason Dang, who's Worm, who does all the streaming on his own. He was a Canadian national champion two years ago. There's a bunch of other Netrunner players from New York where they film this in the background. Maybe you know somebody, but that's really cool. Um, uh, the only other thing I want to say about news is that we do have a date upcoming for uh, the new pack, uh, the Nalube pack. I forget the full name, but it's coming out in next week, I believe. It's on the 5th, so that's coming up really soon. So in North America, that's coming out next week, if I'm not mistaken. That's pretty dope. 
Um, otherwise, in terms of Netrunner, like the new cycle hasn't been announced past this one, while Rain and Reverie, the new Deluxe, has been announced. And it's been almost two months now since we've had any news about new Netrunner stuff besides like play mats that they're selling. So expect something soon um, because we probably should, right? We haven't heard anything in a while. That's basically all. I think this will be a better segment in the middle of the show um, when it's, I don't know. It's probably a better time to hit people up with info. Otherwise, that's all. Uh, tune in next week. We'll have Pat. I'm not going to be here on Thursday. I think that was abundantly clear by this point. Um, unless he dropped in. There's no Thursday stream. Thanks so much to all the people i played games uh, with. I hope we don't run into a super long delay again. Yeah, I'm assuming we're not. Like, there, other stuff have been pretty good. Like, Arkham is coming out really fast. The new uh, thing on Arkham's coming out. This is on the boat. Like, everything looks good. It's just Rain and Reverie is like, I don't know. Woo! One more mute for the road. No. Um, thanks so much for watching. Can Pat do the Thursday stream? Oh man, I'll ask him. That'd be really funny. Uh, I'd be down to see that. Anyways, we'll be back next week. Enjoy yourselves if you have any that run this weekend. Oh, and sorry, in Montreal, there's a game night kit at BD Cosmos this Saturday. It's going to be a good one. Come on by if you're in the area. That's all. Have a good night. And I don't have to do this weird walking away thing because like I can just do this while I'm still making like eye contact.